We got the dog one in. There you go, come on. It's showing up live on my Facebook page. Yeah. It is now. Okay. I see it now. Yeah, I see I it. I guess we're live now. Hi, right, everyone. You can share it on your page? Yeah. Don't stop it just yet because people will be tuning in at 6. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. we're not going to start. We're, we're early. While people are uh, joining, you guys entertain. I'm going to run downstairs and share it real quick. Hey guys, by the way, it's Mark's birthday today. <laughs> he's, he's, he's gone downstairs to do something, but it's his birthday today. So, so wish him happy birthday. He's, he doesn't want people to know, but he's 57. <laughs> the mustache was a midlife crisis decision. <laughs> For everybody tuning in, we're, we just launched it a few minutes early, but we're going to start at 6. Mm. Ah. It's like the most boring live stream ever. <laughs> it's a social experiment to see how long people stick around. I know. Yep. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm back. All right, we get people joining. Lots of people wishing you happy birthday, Mark. Oh, awesome. Happy. Thanks, everyone. Happy 57. 57. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I, I kind of ruined that. I thought you didn't want him to know, but you're 57 today. I'm 57. I'm a very youthful you, 57. You, you don't look a day older than 55. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I get all the ladies. My youthful appearance. Oh boy, is this scratch paper I can use? Yes. Awesome. Yeah. How's your How's your Sunday going, Addy? Fine. Yeah. I, I mean, I have to, I have to say I feel a bit guilty, but I, I, I've been really enjoying uh, my time. I know it's not great for a lot of people, but uh, you have been very productive. I've been, yeah, just very productive. No distraction. Um, and I've been I sleeping mean, really well. It's an opportunity for you guys to have an excuse to, to you know, yeah. Slow I mean, down a little as bit much as I, I really miss the traveling, I really miss you know, going out of town and all that good stuff. Um, the the thought of not having to like worry about, oh my god, I'm going out of town in two weeks. I got to get X, Y, and Z yeah. done. Is a, yeah. is a really nice thing. Oh, it's been really great. For me, the most difficult decision has been just like what to work on. So mm -hmm. I had a couple of uh, remarks to catch up on, and uh, I finally did. Uh, uh, well, you are the last of the like pre ordered ones from, from a while back. Right. So, so what is this one you're doing now? Well, it's one of the two. So I've done I've done the horns on both, and then now on the live stream I'll do the the actual like drawing down here. Okay, you want to let us see the horns? Yeah. Can you scroll down? Remove it. Move it down. Yeah, I'll move it down. Actually, it's easier than moving the camera. There it is. Awesome! That looks amazing. Um, I don't know if you can see in the slide, but uh, the tips of the horns are purple. Matching Danny's. 100%. Oh, that's awesome. So, um, yeah, it's really pretty. 
Actually, I'm going to test this light. Uh, that might be a bit too bright. Oh, it's okay. Where I am? Yeah. Well, well, I am in the dining room. Yeah, I'm not in, not in, not in downstairs in the studio right now. I uh, I always I do all my remarks here in the dining room. Um, mostly just so I can I can hang out with Lisa and we can talk and stuff while I work. My makeshift office, home office. It's true. And I'll show this awesome puzzle that Lisa and I put together that uh, it's just covered in movies. And uh, it took me, what, six, five or six days? Yeah, just like an hour or so each day. Yeah. It's fun, though. Oh, so I'm going to do a, um, a – I'm doing a triple skull. I'm doing a um, – I'm calling it the the, the – birth of the third eye so i'm doing like a um a skull kind of angled down and it'll have a small dot in the center of his forehead and then the one kind of looking straight on and the the flame will start forming and then one with the skull is tilted up and we'll have the like the alex gray like flame coming out of it Do you want oh to i see you've it? already penciled it yeah i went ahead and did it this morning um just because i thought the penciling part would be the boring part to watch so i, I went ahead and did it well i was doing the horns uh so yeah no absolutely um yeah so I, i'm gonna use i'm using um uh molito acrylic enamel pins and um they're really great they uh that almost gives you kind of a uh poster art kind of feel to them. Um, and you're using acrylic, right, Eddie? I'm going to, um, yes, use acrylic. Uh, trying to figure out how to show it because, so this is my wet palette. And it just basically is wet for that uh, keeps the acrylic paint wet and it can keep it wet for days. Um, so that's what I'm going to use. Very, very handy. It, it's smelling, though. Um, it's what? Like, it starts smelling kind of a, hmm. uh, a, a, like old water because it's basically paper oh. wet sitting under a cover for like five days at a time. And when you open it, it's like, like yeah. stale. Water. <laughs> and uh, under that paper is a sponge, right? Like a really thin sponge. It, it, it's actually, yeah, it's it's like a spongy paper. Ball, so it's paper and paper. So the one on the, on the bottom, you get really wet, and then the one on the top is kind of like tracing paper, and it right. only lets by like osmosis lets um, just a tiny bit of moisture through to keep the paint moisturized rather than diluted. Mm -hmm. It's a very, very useful bit of kit. Uh, it's just, like I said, you, you have to keep it actually like moisturized. So while I'm working a few times, like every couple of hours, I kind of spray some water down under in between the two papers. Yeah. So I, I, I use that same um, kind of palette when I'm working with a uh, gouache. And uh, it's definitely, definitely very, very handy. It's, it's nice to be able to put the lid on and the next day not know that your paint is going to be in the same condition that you left it the day before. Yeah, yeah. If I put too much moisture, I, I come to the day and it's like, like if I have five different in there, five different colors, it all like blends together. Yeah. So there's a bit of like a dark art to it. How are we looking? It's um, one o'clock. All right, yeah. All ready right. to start? Yeah. Yeah. All right, six o'clock. Hello, everyone. As I mentioned to everybody earlier, it's Mark's birthday. So wish him happy birthday. Uh, Thanks, dude. All right. Um, so, yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, Addy and I are going to do, we're going to um, uh, do a couple of remarks. Um, Addy's penciling his now. I actually already I penciled mine this morning. Um, and uh, and just here to show you how we do this and then answer your questions. And, uh, of course, we also have our uh, beautiful wives here. We have um, Tamsin, who is uh, downstairs from Addie, uh, but, but in earshot and can, can hear and, and talk. Say hi, Tamsin. 
Hello. <laughs> and then I have my lovely wife, Lisa, who's sitting here next to me, and she's going to be reading off and uh, questions as well. Hi. Um, so if you, if you guys have any questions or anything, um, feel free to ask, and uh, we'll do our best to answer them while we, uh, while we, while we doodle. So I always start off mine with the midtones when I'm doing the um, when I'm doing the remarks like this. Um, when I'm working in marker or paint, I oftentimes start off with um, with the, the the lighter tones and work light to dark. But I find this works better for me. And um, when I'm working uh, in the enamel, acrylic enamel. I'm doing the sketch with a colored pencil. Um, it's just a gray. Uh, uh, I, I like the Faber Castell colored pencils, and they erase quite easily off. Uh, so any marks that are left over, I can erase off the poster. The great thing about these enamel pens is that because they're uh, because they're 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 almost they're basically paint pens. Is I don't have to worry about, I can be as messy as I want with the pencil underneath because it's, it thoroughly covers up any pencil lines I put down. Um, Troy Perkins has a question. He wants to know uh, what gives you inspiration for each of the designs? Um, for the, for the actual remarks? Yes. Um, well, I don't know. I, why don't you talk about the remarks though? Uh, you know, I mean, I just kind of go along with what, what I like to draw. I mean, my thing was that, that there's so many tool artists that do such an amazing work. And there's people like Addy who really like, you know, carved out a niche with his style and what he does. So I was trying to think of something that was going to kind of make my stuff kind of be unique and, and to, to me, um, but still capture that tool aesthetic. So I, I, I decided I would go with fish. I really like the idea of drawing. Um, they're, they're fun to draw, first off. And I think there's a lot of really creepy, cool-looking things under the ocean um, as opposed to, like, animals on land. So uh, so I kind of made fish my kind of thing, and then I would just go and research and try to find, like, just funky co or cool-looking, funky-looking, just wacky fish. And, and, you know, and I really like octopus, too. I do octopus and squid a lot. Oh, I think I'm going to paint. Mm -hmm. I'm going to move on to paint. Question for you is how do I score one of these doodles? <laughs> how do you score one? Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good question. Um, if you want to score... Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Daddy. You should answer. Um, well, I, you know, I haven't been putting any up for sale um, since the first, uh, the first uh, Boston poster I did. Too busy. So yeah, it's been too busy. But um, if you would like to purchase this one, you actually can because I'm not. Uh, I, this has not been claimed yet. So uh, what we'll do is um, Mark is going to be doing these as he has time, and he'll. Um, do a few where we'll post them online, but I've also taken a mailing list and I will be communicating to some people um, about, you know, availability and pricing um, if you're on that list. I'm still catching up on the ones that I uh, pre-sold a uh, couple of months ago, a few months ago. So uh, I haven't really thought about opening up any new sales until I finish what I have to do because I, I, I don't I don't like keeping people waiting and I've already made, made or some people waiting uh, which I'm not happy about so I have to get these done first after that I'll start deciding what to do with new sales um, actually since we started see a bit early before and I was showing I just wanted to show again this poster is the one of the Brooklyn ones but I've uh, earlier today painted in the horns. And as I was mentioning earlier, uh, you probably see it, but the purple I used on the, the tips matches the Demi's signature. Uh, I had the exact same color signature 
and uh, and then being the uh, something down at the bottom. So I don't know. Does that answer the question, Pandu? <laughs> I think that was sufficient. Um, Bradley yeah. asked, uh, which comic book covers were the most challenging or time consuming to do? Uh, for me, it's always the, the, the team shots, the, 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 the like the one I just finished. Yeah. Like the, um, the X-Men Fantastic Four, um, you know, the house of X POX double page spread that had like 50 characters on it was really, really challenging. It took me a month to do that one. And, um, and then there was, uh, uh, the X of Swords piece took a while. So yeah, those are always, it's not just a matter of so many characters to draw because I mean, that's challenging in and of itself. But when you, when you're working with that many characters, it's, it can become very difficult to make everybody look like, you know, as their own care. It, it basically it can become mud. It can become a mess very, very easily if you're not really careful with it. So it's, it's a lot about um, staging and, and, and laying out the, the cover so that, it's still going to be pleasing to the eye and not become just, you know, mud. So that's always tough. What about you, Addy? Uh, yeah, I mean, team shots are always really tough, especially even just like working out the, the layout for them and how to give, because they can turn, yeah, into just a total, total mess. Mm -hmm. uh, but the other thing also, uh, aside from that, covers that have buildings in them, I find it really because uh, it's it's kind of difficult to decide how far to go with the back, and because I don't want to leave it too unfinished, and then it doesn't, you know, it kind of drags the rest of the cover down. But then if I go too far with it, it competes with the um, like main subject. And um, I think that the one that I'm really happy with how that I went is the Galactus. I, I knew you were going to bring that one up because that's 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 some of the best buildings you've ever done in that piece. Yeah. No, I mean that that really is like for me a triumph, you know, pulling off what I wanted to do. No, it was a gorgeous, gorgeous cover. Really great mood to it. Thank you, Jason. Yeah, actually, uh, that cover. Go ahead. No, go ahead. Oh no, I was just going to say I was um in New York. We were uh, at New York Comic Con, and I was going to meet a friend at the MoMA Museum. And uh, there was a guy just like a block away from MoMA taking a photo in the middle of the street, like up towards the sky. And I was like, oh, what, what is he taking a photo of? And I looked up and it was these buildings disappearing into the uh, uh, um, clouds up top and it just looked epic. And I was about to do that, about to start the, the Galactus cover. I was like, well, there's no Galactus. No. So I took the photo, and that's what um, I used the reference. Perfect. Jason is asking, Mark, when did you first start getting into Tool? Um, yeah, I, I discovered Tool back in 1994, 95. Oh, I was a huge Primus fan. I was a Primus fan in high school. And, um, and then, of course, Tool came out around the same time that, you know, Helmet, Rage Against the Machine, those were all kind of in the same kind of kind of time frame and so uh yeah i just really got into them i still remember the first time i heard tool i was at a party and i don't remember why we probably were smoking a joint i would imagine but um we went out to someone's car and there was like four of us in there and um and he put on uh tool and i guess the album had just come out and uh and it was just like what is this you know it was, it was really cool um I'll, I'll, I'll be the first to admit though i kind of I listened to Tool for a long time, and then I, I kind of just, not that I stopped listening to Tool, I just really stopped listening to a lot of music. I really got into other things like um, audiobooks and podcasts and stuff. Um, and it was uh, actually Addy, hanging out with Addy, that he reminded me of Tool, and I ended up going back and getting a lot of the, um, digging up my old albums or actually buying the albums I had missed. And um, I would say, what, that was probably about five years ago, Addy? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, yeah, and um, yeah, and just kind of reawakened my my my, my love for them. Abby, another question for you. Yep. Did you draw any more posters from 
uh, both no. I didn't do any for the shows. There were the last ones I did were the ones used for a million tour, um, and I have no idea, uh, honestly, like what's what. I mean, I'm assuming the posters will. I don't know actually. Uh, anything I, I might say might is just total guess. So I have absolutely no idea. Yeah, I, I kind of got the impression looking at the um, the posters that were released, you know, prior to the to the tour getting put on hiatus. That it seems like um, they were trying to trying a, a new pool of artists. Like they really wanted to make them unique uh, to the to the first uh, leg of the tour. Oh, and so I it mean, seemed like there was a lot of artists that hadn't been used before. I thought that was kind of cool. There, I mean, it's a there's a there's like a pattern to it. To, to like that group of artists but um, um i just yeah i just don't know like what i'm assuming some of the posters got printed uh and when will ever be seen or not uh, i have no idea yeah i mean i'm well, sure that they will reuse uh i just don't know like i have no idea whether they'll print new ones what you know i have no idea one of the problems is they probably have to because i think all the posters have dates on them yeah, yeah, no, no, that's what I mean. Just that, you know, if they have posters for the canceled shows, they might, uh, you know, offer any more. I, 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 again, I'm, I'm just getting completely yes. No way of knowing. Um, Jeff asks, on average, how long does it take to design one of the gig posters? Uh... Depends. How long take you, Addy? Uh, it really depends. Uh, it, um, <laughs> we often work. Uh, they were much better this last tour, but often work very kind of uh, stance. So uh, the uh, Kral poster, the, the guy, you know, the, the like the uh, sculpture with the broken with the skull coming out. I had to do that in two days because. Adam called me and he's like, hey, can you poster? We need it on Wednesday. And it was like Monday. Um, if you remember, that was actually exactly a year ago because I was, I was there. Mark. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Right. I think it might have been. Uh, anyway, because uh, I remember showing it to you in Atlanta. Anyway, so yeah, it can take that long or if, if I have time. Like the Tempest piece I did, which wasn't a poster, but for the T-shirt, I spent over a week on that because I had the time to do it. Right. It really, it really depends on you know multiple circumstances. Yeah, my, mine generally take uh, take about about a week um, to do uh, from layout to uh, to finish. I mean, the great thing is, and I gotta love Adam for this. Um, they don't want to see layouts. They don't care about seeing layouts. They just say, you know, do your thing. And, you know, I would always offer, you know, do you want me to send you a layout or what I have in mind? They're like, nope, nope, just do whatever you want. And um, which was really freeing, really cool. Yeah, but I think, you know, Adam being an artist, he knows he'll get the, they'll get the best work if they let you do whatever you want. Right. Because that's what Tool do. <laughs> tool do whatever. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> well, I really hope I get a chance to. Well, I'm I'm gonna do it regardless, um, whether I whether it's for Tool or not. But there's a um, the two posters I did are actually thematically um, together, and so there's actually a triptych I want to do. So it's a third piece, um, uh, because the first one, this one, Clavum, represents the mother of the triangle in the center of the seven pointed star. Um, and then the, the second poster, the Atlanta poster is the child. Um, and so I want to uh, do a third one, which would be the father. Um, so I'll, I'll, like I said, I'll do it regardless. Um, but you know, if, if, if tool will have me, I'd love to do it for, for them, but we'll see. Question from someone. Chair, like the ones we sit in now. Uh, I, I, I have a Herman Miller on that. I'm that's the one I'm using. 
I use that. What's the name of the company? I got my chair from. I can't remember. It's a high end gaming chair. Yeah, it's a it's a gaming chair. Um that I, I, Secret Lab. What's that? Secret Lab. Secret Lab, yes. thank you. I kept wanting to say Shapeways, and that's a different thing. <laughs> um you, is it is it a Omega or uh, the Titan? It, it, no, I, I have the Omega. Um, I, now that I, I have it, um, I, I realized I should have gotten a Titan because the Omega is just a little too narrow. Because I like to cross my legs while I work, and it's a little too narrow, which isn't bad because it makes me not cross my legs because it's that's bad for my circulation. I really shouldn't be doing it, so it kind of forces me to uncross my legs. But I probably should have gotten a Titan. No, my chair actually also doesn't allow me to cross because I really like sitting on one of my legs. Uh, mm -hmm. this, chair, this chair makes that really uncomfortable, which is actually good. Uh, yeah. I, I really shouldn't be doing it. No, it's it's really bad for your posture. I, I definitely do. I either cross my – I sit Indian style in my chair or I, I do what you do. I sit on my foot. Um, someone's asking, what's your favorite Tool song and album? Uh, my, my, I seem to go along with whatever's kind of the newest. Um, so um, I really like Tempest a lot. Um, but I think, you know, the, the title track, Fear and Oculum, is, is probably my favorite song off the album. Um, I could just listen to it over and over and over again. So I'm really enjoying that right now. It's probably my favorite tool song, but ask me again next week. It might change. Um, Addy, I think you'll say Tempest, right? Didn't you say it's the perfect song? Well, it, it, I mean, because Fear Inoculum is new, it's it's what really like speaks to me now. And, uh, you know, I can I can kind of see the growth and also I've um, uh, I'm quite biased because I got to like listen to them uh, uh, writing a lot of the songs or I should say a lot of the parts of songs uh, on uh, Ear Inoculum so it kind of feels like you know because over the last I guess eight years I've kind of been hearing bits and pieces every time I, I you know we'd go visit on them so to me it's it's you know my favorite band of all time and to actually have the privilege of actually like witnessing them uh you know uh, writing and recording some of the stuff i can you know it's it's just, to me it's like the best album of all time yeah uh, but song wise i mean tempest i think is the best song ever written by anybody ever but <laughs> it's not necessarily my favorite because I think descending uh, is equally as majestic. It's just incredible. It's, it's just an epic, epic song. Uh, but you know, it, it's really it's kind of it's difficult because in 1996, when Anima came out, it literally changed my life. It, it inspired me so much. It came out my first uh, quarter at an art college. And I remember everything about the day when I picked it up. I remember uh, putting it into my uh, discman and listening to it on the bus and remember the weather and everything. So, uh, um, uh, you know, it's, it's really difficult. I can't really say, oh, this, is what, this one's my favorite. I just think that the new album is the best. But I don't know if it's like... Ask me like 10 years down the line, I guess. Right. <laughs> I will say, and Jack got me. I mean, I, I always like the song, but hearing my hearing my son, my son is is pl my son plays bass, um, and he's twelve, and he's still he's still learning, but he's he's really taken to it like a fish to water. And he came home one day because he's got a friend at school plays bass with him um, that taught himself stink fist, and so Jack came home and been trying to teach himself <laughs> stink fist, which I it's made me really love the song because now I just imagine Jack, my son, playing it. Yeah. I mean, incredible song, and the video is just mind blowing. Mm -hmm. it's, By it's, the way, it's, such uh, a, it's such a powerful song. Um, I'm gonna use the airbrush, so no, getting too fancy. Loud. Let me know if it's too loud. Um, Panama City. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can you do us airbrush T-shirts while we're at it, Addy? 
Yep. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely. I'd, I'd love to do one for um, Mastodon. And actually, uh, um, was, well, I mean, it was kind of a, in passing, but I spoke to a couple of the guys actually in, uh, was it? Yeah, it was in Atlanta in the, in the uh, backstage. Because mm -hmm. they're really good posters. Um, maybe one. Uh, who knows? I, I, I'd love to do one for Primus. Um, that would be that would be amazing. If someone knows Les Claypool, give him my number. You were too nervous to. I was. Uh, Addy and Tamsin came in town. This was five years ago, four years ago, and uh, when Tool came to Atlanta, and um, Primus opened up for them, and we were backstage, and we got to go into like the little commissary area, the little cafeteria area um, where everybody was eating, and we were at a table, and there was really no one else in there, but on the table next to us was Les Claypool hanging out and talking with somebody, and. I could not bring myself to say hello. I was just, I mean, it was like my entire high school life was sitting right there next to me and I just, I couldn't bring myself to it. Is this too loud in the... Like, uh, it's a little it? loud. It's not bad though. Because I can put myself on mute for like a minute while I do this. Nah, you're fine. Um, Joanna's asking, uh, do you make up the remarks on the spot or do you plan ahead? Uh, generally make them up on the spot. Yeah, I mean, I, I did the other one that was kind of a similar idea the other day. Uh, and, and it was kind of on the spot, but then I had to do another one kind of similar to that. So I guess it was planned, but it's not like a there's no sketch for it or any kind of a, like prelim. I love the Hellraiser vibe you're doing there, Addy. It's a, uh, that's a, uh, I'm a big Hellraiser fan. Well, technically it's a, it's kind of a combination of death mask and like muscle. Mm -hmm. like skin removed but I really like uh, images of death masks uh, they're so creepy but like serene and they always have like eyes closed um, so they, they yeah um, I just yeah I really like them it's gonna be like a flame eye in the middle like with the split where the split is mm -hmm. I'm just trying to do I mean, as, as you, kind of something different every time, so there aren't really two that are the same. Yeah, that's always the goal is, is yeah, it's not so much, you know, planning something out. It's just, okay, well, I've already done this, so I want to do something different than, than, than what I've already done. Now, these horns, I really am working on them. These are the last ones. Uh, I will not do horns again. So these two posters, this one and the next one, that I already did the horns on. That's it. I, I will not do any more horns. Oh, you heard it here first, everybody. Yep, no more horns. Might do something different, like, you know, that kind of a big remark. It's just when I first did the horns, so many people wanted them. And, and you know, I ended up doing probably seven or eight. Well, so you've done a bunch. Yeah, and I think that's enough. So what I'm doing now is I'm basically just blocking in all the shadows and the blacks. I'm not being, I'm not too concerned with how, uh, with how smooth this looks. It's when I start doing the highlights that I want really concentrate on making this really smooth and, and, um, crisp, but, uh, because it's a skull and skulls are kind of like, um, jaggedy and, and it's okay to make it a little more chunky. Like this.
Now, so far, this is my favorite Rimal Kardamani. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Someone is asking how it, uh, how is the paper to work on? They're different. Well, this paper, I think this paper and the paper that Addy's working on right now are, are very similar. Um, they're a little more toothy, so they they, they yeah. take the marker and the paint and pencil very well. The 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 mark the uh, posters from the second leg of the tour are super glossy and super smooth, and so they're they're a little more difficult to paint. I mean, they they take the paint marker just the same pretty much of this paper, but I can't draw on it with a pencil. It won't take a pencil at all. I actually have to draw on it with a very thin Sharpie and then, you know, then draw over it. Um, have you, have you tried remarking on the old, the new post? No, I need to, I need to do um, uh, a national uh, next after I finish these two, uh, probably well, not today, but. Um... When did you two first see? Uh, I put them live. Oh, God. 98. It was the Seattle show. And it was the infamous Seattle show where they had uh, uh, Alien Robot on stage. And it was the one and only show with that robot because it malfunctioned in almost everybody. Uh, <laughs> it malfunctioned so, in what? It malfunctioned and, actually, and almost like killed the band on stage. It's mm -hmm. funny. Um, I remember, you know, because because I saw him, I was a huge fan, and I see him, and this robot came out. I mean, it was to me in my in my mind, it looked like it was eight feet nine or even like ten feet tall. I don't know if it was, but like you know, in my memory, that's how big it is. And it it was like animated because it was on all hydraulics, and then suddenly something happened, and it just started spinning out of control. Whoa! And, and I remember thinking at the time, I was like, oh, that's really weird. So anyway, fast forward you know, a few years ago, uh, and I was in the tool loft with Adam, Danny, and Justin, and we were talking, and I told them, oh, you know, I was, I was, or maybe I told Adam before, and Adam was like, oh, hey, Abby was at that show, and then Danny was like, oh, yeah, that, that, you know, damn robot, it almost killed us all, he said I was watching it for my drum, like, it just started you know, I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> so they never used it again because they were too terrified of it. So it, it's they say they, that it's probably somewhere in their store, uh, but yeah, you don't know. I mean, it's just it costs a lot of money to make, so it's a bit of a shame that it never. But there is a really grainy of it uh, online of that concert, and you can actually look it up. Of it going crazy. Yeah, of, of the robot kind of spinning, yeah. This weird fleshy alien robot. <laughs> well, anyway. I know what I'm looking up. I know what I'm looking up when I uh when I get through this. When did you see him first? Was it um, with us? I think it was with you guys, yeah. Cause I mean I that that was like that was the fifth time I'd seen Primus. Um but uh yeah, I think that was my first my first, they never played. I went to Lollapalooza like every year for like God must have been six or seven years, um, but I don't think they ever played Lollapalooza. Yeah. Did you Did you see Primus at Georgia Theater in Athens? Yes. Jason, then Mark was probably at that show. Jason said he was at, he saw them in in, uh, in Athens at Georgia Theater. Oh, really? No kidding. <laughs> What was that, Tamsin? I was just looking, actually, I was downstairs and I was looking at uh, Sid Mead books. Uh, uh, and he was one of the artists that really, really, from when I was about it, like 15 or 16. Um, so. Like going back to like the the beginning it was probably like Mobius, Sid, um, and like various European uh, comic books. Um, but these days, um, really, really like like Katsuya Terada, the Japanese artist. He's one of my favorite artists. Um, so 
I don't know. All, all kinds of people. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I really get into like the good girl artists of like the 40s and 50s. I really like that stuff. Um, and, uh, you know, growing up, it was always, um, Geeker was always a big influence on me. And not necessarily to, you know, want to draw like him or, or, or but I just really love the creepiness of his artwork. Design. His design work, yeah, was really amazing. Um, and, Did you see uh, the- hmm. <laughs> Not Netflix. Did you see the uh, uh, Giger uh, documentary uh, on Amazon Prime? No, no. Is it an older documentary? Uh, looks like it. Yeah, I, I mean, obviously he died, so it could have been, you know, uh, um, filmed w- when he was alive. But uh, I don't know how old it is, but I haven't seen it in an hour long. I just saw it on Amazon when I was browsing last a uh, couple of nights ago. Yeah, I was going to say, I- I've seen... Um... I've seen a Geiger documentary or Geiger, but I, I don't know if that was, um, if that's the one, it's the same one. So I'll have to go look. If it's not, I'd definitely like to check it out. This is um, on the camera. This, this light is really bleaching. You know, let me just turn. Uh, it's not that showing looks the awesome, color. man. Yeah. Hmm? That looks awesome. In the color, the highlights are blue. Uh, it's it doesn't seem to be showing it properly, camera. It's definitely picking up weird. Like Justin's signature in the, in the video is showing up as bright orange. It's not. It's kind of faded red, than more than bright orange. How's it look on your screen, Lisa? Um, it actually looks better. I think. It, are, you, are you looking on your screen or are you looking at your phone? The screen. So I'm looking at Lisa's over here, and it looks pretty good. Um, there's been a couple of questions asking what other artist posters for uh, Tool do you guys have? You guys really liked? Uh, Alan Williams, I, I think his stuff is is unbelievable. I mean, really love Corinne. Uh, I love yeah, that, that Corinne is just that, that was amazing. Yeah. Yeah, she, she, it's, I mean, she's she's incredible. Uh, yeah, Alan's stuff is just awesome. Um, Alan actually um, often or always has a booth very close to our booth in San Diego. At San Diego. Mm-hmm. I've, met, I've yeah. met him a few times in the past. He's a super nice guy. That's where um, Adam met Alan, I believe. Uh, met- I think. Where was it? Sorry, Monster Palooza. Ah, oh, okay. Uh, that's at least what he, that's where he talked to him. I think uh, I stand to be correct. But um, no, I mean there there have been some really amazing ones. I, I, that's first poster, I well, I like both of them. But the first one, I just really, really love because. It's so different than all of the other ones because all of the other ones figure to him and Esad was, was more like force of nature. Thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, really love. Um, I love his second one. Reminds me of uh, Attack on Titan. Oh, yeah. Um, trying to remember what other ones. Um, I mean, there were so many good ones. Um, oh, yeah. There were a few really freaky ones. They were like, this is this is good for me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, not going to go into detail which ones. It's just, I remember thinking, I'm like, ooh, this is really freaky. <laughs> <laughs> um. What is her name? We're friends with her on Instagram. Uh, we follow her. She did uh, She did two or three of the posters. Oh, she did like the marionette. Yeah, yeah. Hmm? Yes. Yeah, she's amazing. She's incredible. And the remarks she does are phenomenal. Oh. Her art book is awesome. Uh, Carly's poster was awesome. Oh, yeah. Carly's was great. 
I love Carly's remarks too. Those um, yeah, those right. kind of Renaissance yeah. painting ones she does, and the geometric shapes is really cool. Well, those geometric shapes are mind blowing. Um, look at it, and I'm like, this is madness at work. <laughs> right. <laughs> No, but that's really cool because we were talking about, you know, trying to like have your own like vision and the kind of thing you're known for. And she's kind of become, she's known for those geometric shapes. And that's kind of, that's her thing now, which is really cool. I really wanted to just uh, draw Garfield on all of mine. And that was <laughs> Dilbert. <laughs> People would, wouldn't go for it. <laughs> <laughs> guess, I bet you somebody's gonna make me to do Garfield. Oh no, absolutely! No, I have uh, Eric on the tool board wants me to do a poster for him and draw uh, Captain Marvel on it. <laughs> I'm like, sure. Hey, it's your money. <laughs> I'd do Venom. That would go really well on that. Actually, it would. Work, yeah. yeah. Other moons that uh, Venom cover I did, uh, the last one of him coming towards us. Oh, the running one? Yep. Naruto run one? Yeah, the Naruto, Naruto run. <laughs> no, people kept, when I did that cover, people kept saying, like, oh, Naruto run. I was like, I don't know what this is. <laughs> I don't know. So I had to look it up. And I was like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what you did. <laughs> I've never seen Naruto, so I, I, I didn't. It's like when people kept, I kept being linked to the whole Bosnian thing. I'm like Bosnian mode. What the hell is Bosnian mode? And it's 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 like the mode of the Super Saiyan mode in uh, uh, Dragon Ball Z. And yeah, lost to me. <laughs> <laughs> You might be 57, but I act like I'm 57. <laughs> Just to clear this things up. I am not 57. <laughs> you look pretty good for 57. You can pass for Why? I look 57 because I had a friend talk me into going to the Tower of Terror and it aged me 10 years <laughs> in, in, in 15 minutes. No, man, it, 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 it like grew some hair on your chest. <laughs> <laughs> Grew some hair somewhere. Has everybody um, logged off? Are we just two of us talking to each other? <laughs> Any more questions? Read some more. Oh, Damson, you see anything? I see everything. No, do you see any questions? Joanne is asking, can you talk Adam Jones into doing a poster? He was supposed to. Actually, this uh, the, the the tour that we did, or we did the tour they did, um, uh, you know, that included Atlanta and Nashville. Adam was actually going to do one, but uh, I think he just ran out of time just because of the tour and everything. Yeah, but, uh, so yeah I was excited to see what he was going to do. I hope that's okay that I shared that. <laughs> well, of course it's okay. Um, Maybe since he's on lockdown now, he can he has some time to do it. That's true. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, that'll happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They've got two kids; they're not going to be doing anything. <laughs> Maybe they'll write another album. Mm. <laughs> well, according to, to Danny, they have, he said they had enough material for a whole nother album in the interview he did. They do record everything, every uh, single um, uh, writing session, every single rehearsal they record it. Uh, so, and then they go through it and kind of pick and choose riffs and bits and pieces and, uh, I mean, I've heard versions of songs that were ended up on Fear and Oculum that sound nothing like what the finals are, and they were just as amazing. Um, I, I remember crying in there 
rehearsal space as how incredible it was. I've done that twice, actually. You first cried? Time, yeah, they asked me. It's the first time I went there. They were all there. Well, the three, the three musicians were there, and Adam was like, uh, you know, choose three songs of the board, and they had a board of all the songs they've been uh, rehearsing, and it was maybe I don't know, like ten songs. And I was like, what? He's like, yeah, yeah, choose three songs, and we'll play them for you. And I chose three songs, but one of them was a uh, uh, parable, parabola. Uh, mm -hmm. Is one of my all-time favorite songs, and when they uh, and uh, their loft is like I don't know, it's as big as like a, a a normal room, and there's just one chair in the center of it. So when you sit in that chair, Adam said, sit there and then move the chair, and it's like the perfect triangulated spot between the three musicians. Uh, and they, because Danny likes to play really, really loud, uh, they all play really, really loud. And it, it is just like uh, the best concert ever. It's. You know, I, I was going to say. So what you're basically saying is, is that you got your own private tool concert. I, I did, yeah. And right I mean, now, it's not right now. Everyone listening is just eating their fist. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I had. Uh, I asked for. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, parabola, jambi. And Anima, because I kind of wanted like three songs, different albums, uh, and uh, they were all amazing. But but Parabola was just, yeah, just the best, mind-numbingly good. Question from Jonathan is: How has the quarantine affected your creative process? Is it beneficial or is it hard to get motivated? More than ever, been getting so much work done. It's kind of crazy. Uh, for me, it's it's hard to get motivated, but then when I start working, I, I, I I'm really in it. So it, it's you know it, it takes me a bit of time to like to get there, but once I'm there, I'm like, yeah, I'm in this. You did the puzzle and you built the falcon. That's so. true. Yeah. So I've been. You needed a little more, a little rest space, I think. Yeah. I mean, I I I know that I have uh, you know just a bit of a different perspective on it all just because, you know, having kind of gone through, you know, somewhat kind of a similar thing before. And I just am a, a really, like, motivated to, to, to kind of use the time the best that I can. So um, I kind of find that the days are too short, which is ridiculous to say. But uh, I find, like, I get up, do a couple of things, and next thing I know, it's 8 o'clock at night. And uh, it's been like that for the last three weeks. Time does feel like it has moved quicker. Um, that's for sure. No, I mean, and, you know, not to get, I, I don't really want to like talk about much, but it's just suddenly in the news, they're talking about, like, you know, the exit, the reopening. You know, I'm like, wait a second, what happened? You're just like shutting down. So it almost feels like, uh, uh, to me, like the last whatever it is now. That's the actually the biggest problem for me is that I just could lose track of time. Like to me, it doesn't feel like a Sunday at all. It feels like I don't know some non-existent day, and every day is kind of the same. Yeah. We well, yeah, losing track of days. That that's that's the tough thing. Like you know, I wake up and I'm like, okay, it feels like Friday, but it turns out it's Wednesday or. Not that it matters because every day is Groundhog's Day. That's true. Yeah, that's the thing, and I think actually working uh, lets me know that the time is actually passing because every day I'm working either on something new or I'm further along on something that I've been working on, and actually mentally it really helps me because. Um, you know, I was working on this big painting, and every day I would add something to it, and it kind of was like, okay, you know, so I can see looking back, it actually had been, you know, I worked on it for almost two weeks, and it's really quite a big piece, and looking at it now, I'm like, oh yeah, I can see where the two weeks went, because it's a mm -hmm. lot of work, so that also has, has really helped me stay motivated, because otherwise, if I was every day, like, oh, 
maybe I'll do something, but then I don't. And then every day I do that, I think I completely lose track of sun. Oh, yeah. Um, Ed, Ed is asking uh, when you guys get out for some fresh air during these quarantines, what are you doing? Um, well, you and I just go for walks a lot, um, which I really like. Um, that's really about it. Lisa goes to the grocery store and stuff every once in a while, but other than that, parents, yeah, um, yeah we, we haven't really been going out too much. Let's see um, here. We go to the grocery store. Yeah, <laughs> that's the big alley. Because here in the UK, they you know, there's a whole thing that like you're allowed to like go out to exercise, but we're weightlifters, <laughs> so <laughs> you know we just put all the weights in our clothing room. Abby, there's a question for you. Um, why do you like owls? Does it stem from childhood, or do you just what, what, what's the deal with the owls? I just like owls. They're just cool looking. What's Honestly. the deal with the owls? <laughs> yeah, I just, I just think they're really beautiful and really cool looking, um, and and kind of like, yeah, they look really wise, but apparently they're really stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's what I they because because of the the size of their eyes. In order to hunt at night, their brains are absolutely tiny. Did you not get taught that if you don't have anything nice to say, that's it? Yeah, but it's not like I'll go like, be like, oh, no, no, we're pissed off at him. We're gonna pick him for They're too stupid to be pissed off. They're going to be talking about you at their next meeting. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like animals in general. Oh, it did really well. Uh, Emma Frost auction was amazing. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I, like everybody involved was really like, I, I'm really like grateful. And it really went to a good cause and, and I helped, I think, a lot. So um, couldn't have asked for more. Uh, Joanna's asking if either of you would plan on releasing artist prints in Reebok. Uh, like our own prints? Yeah. I mean, yeah, eventually. I think that was something we planned on for like con season, but con season's yeah, kind of not I, happening anymore. The, the thing is, I, I, I was actually saving a number of the prints for San Diego and New York. And, um, you know, so now it's kind of having to like re, you know, I don't even know, figure re out. How, yeah. Um, so, but it, I think releasing my own prints will only happen really once I sell all of the, the tool ones. Yeah, same, yeah. same for me. I haven't offered any. Aside from the Brooklyn ones, I haven't offered any of the other ones for sale at all. Um, so I think that will happen first before I do my own prints. But um, some of the art I did for tool, tool own, and then some of the art uh, I just licensed to them. So... Uh, and I think most of the artists who worked on these posters did the same. So we actually own the art. Um, we actually own the image. So yeah, we can yeah. technically, even though it was it was tool centric. I think some of the artists um, they just took artwork that had, they had previously done and and basically turned it into tool posters. But yeah. some guys like you and I actually produce new pieces of artwork. Um, but even that being the case, we still we own the image. Yep. So 
question for both of you. Since many conventions have been cancelled, what are you doing in terms of commissions? Will you open commission lists on social media? Uh, I, I will not. Uh, I think possibly if I run out of everything that I need to do, and I'm, but I, I yeah, I, I just don't see myself opening commission lists uh, anytime soon. Yeah, I, I, I still have. Huh? You're yeah, I'm pretty backed up. I actually, I have some commissions still on my plate that I need to to get to um, before too long. So if I can get all the work I have on my plate and all the commissions off my plate, then I may. But that's a uh, that's a real don't hold your breath scenario, unfortunately. No, that, that's the thing. I have I have an Ironman commission I need to do next week, which is a holdover from last year, and until I clear. Absolutely everything I have to do, I don't because I really hate again uh, keeping people waiting. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, 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 yeah, I made some people wait, and I really don't want to do that again. So it'll only after I clear everything I have, will I consider opening again. And even then, it'll be one at a time. Uh, yeah, if, because yeah, I, um, I, I really don't, don't like. Uh, owing art. What's much more likely to happen is me doing kind of like how I did the Emma uh, yeah. just yeah. Not really yeah. Uh, uh, question from Mark Jason's asking what made you go with the three skull thing on this remark? Um, I, I I always like the comic panels where you see the one character doing multiple things, like whether it's like, you know, Spider-Man flipping like across the building, they'll show like five Spider-Man and like the different poses as he flips. So I'm kind of like kind of a riff off that of the, the opening of the, of the, of the third eye I thought would be kind of cool looking. And you did one similar, right? Uh, he did a, Eddie, you did yeah. one like, like straight on then two in profile, I believe. Yeah. Yeah, but it wasn't a sequence. It was just three skulls. I think I've done it a couple of times. But it wasn't, like I said, it wasn't a sequence. It was more uh, just a, yeah, three skulls. Yeah, another thing that I, you probably can't really see on camera, but uh, I'm using um, luminous paints. Uh, they really pop like crazy um, for the yellow. So, Eddie, when they lift the quarantines, what's the first thing you're going to do? What are you calling it? The quarantines. Qu quarantines? The I quarantines. Will, I will lift the quarantines. <laughs> Ask it correctly. What are you going to do when they lift the quarantines? That's, a, that's an awful, awful word. <laughs> It's my birthday. You have to let me say whatever I want. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you, you know, at fifty-seven, you're probably getting a bit of dementia. Out here. <laughs> I, I give you, I give you some, some leeway. I'm not fifty-seven. <laughs> <laughs> Get off my lawn. You were first. So, what, 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 what did you say? What are you going to do? After the quarantines. After the quarantines. Well, I know I what you're going to do. I know exactly what you guys are going to do. What is it? Go to the gym. Um. No, I, I, I really, uh, I really just want to be able to drive for pleasure. I really miss it. Uh. You know, I have the the couple of old cars that I really want to drive, and and, and then my my you know the Porsche. 
it's just sitting there and, and I'm just really like that's the thing that I miss the most which is really like a, a totally spoiled response it's it's but that that's what it is no that's all right I don't blame you I mean you did just get a badass new car and then almost immediately had to basically you know garage it yep now soon soon yeah the, the irony is that the petrol is so cheap now mm. I will say since um this, this is more of an American problem. I don't know if you guys have this issue. Well, not a really issue, but benefit. But because Lisa now works from home as my manager, um, we're getting a huge discount on our insurance. Um, well, I don't know about huge. Well, a lot. Because I mean, you have to drive less than, what is it, 7,500 miles a year on the car, and which we, we will easily do um, or do not. Um, so we're going we're gonna to get a little bit of a discount, which would be nice. I know that's what everybody tuned in for is to hear about auto insurance. <laughs> but we did save a ton of money by switching to Geico. I saved a ton of money by switching my insurance. I couldn't believe it. When did art become a boat? And did you always know that you wanted to be an artist? And did you have a day job you were eventually able to retire from? Um, I mean, um, going back to kind of like what gave me the discipline to work during this. So in, in uh, Bosnia, uh, where I'm from, you would choose a direction going into high school. So kind of like how in the States, you know, you only do it when you go to college. In Bosnia, you can go to high school. Uh, and I wanted to go because I thought it was really cool and I, uh, you know, could draw, but I didn't really take it that seriously. But then when the war in Bosnia started, I think I was about 16. That's when I actually realized that, like, oh, wait, this could actually be a career. Uh, and then um, when I moved to the States, when I was going to college, I had a, you know, a crappy job. But um, I was very lucky to get hired straight out of college uh, to work at Nintendo as a concept artist. So technically, I didn't like had have to like work a day job while I did art. Uh, it was more like I had a college job, and then as soon as I graduated, I got a, an art job. So I guess that kind of answers the question. I, I was. Uh was a uh, wore a tie every day. I used to work in, um, I was a supervisor in customer service for Nextel. And, um, and I did that Managing for, I, I was, I was, I had a team of 12 under me. Um, and I did that uh, for a while. And then I, I, I started getting some, some, ah, didn't pay very well, but they were jobs, some comic jobs. And uh, I started working for a company that had a book out of image or a couple of books out of image. And uh, I sat down with Lisa one night and just said, cause I was just exhausted. Cause I've been, I would work my day job and I would come home and I would draw all night. And um, so I finally sat down with Lisa and just said, listen, I, I need to quit my job. We had just bought our first new house. I said, I need to quit my job. I need to focus on art um, 110%. And uh, I need you to support us. <laughs> And uh, Lisa, being the amazing person she is, she said, okay, you have two years. And if at the end of two years you're not making as much or more money than you're making at your regular job, you've got to go back to work. Um, and, you know, I know I tell this story a lot, but right around the two-year mark is when I got my first contract with Marvel. So, uh, yeah, I was, a, I was a desk jockey for, uh, for years. Yeah, I've only I've never really had like a proper job kind of thing. 
because you know the college jobs were like I worked at a pizza place and then I worked at a movie theater. You know, they're not like you know they're they're kind of like the, the kind of jobs you would expect to have in college. Uh, but I've never had to work in an office or. Well, at Nintendo, I did work at a, in an office, but you know, it's not. I was just more. Yeah. A more fun office than, let's say, Next Hell. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. Hey, we're, we've just gone over an hour, Mark. What do you want to do? Uh, let's just keep going. On here? If that's, yeah, if that's cool with you. Yeah, it's fine with me. I, I shared it on my page, so you know, people people can can watch it over there if they want to. Well, we'll do the next one on yours then. Yeah, that sounds good. I got a good rhythm going right now. For your fifty eighth birthday. Oh, now now I'm fifty eight. No, no, no. We'll do the next one on your fifty eighth birthday. Oh, well, I see. <laughs> You know, it's crazy. Um, I was there exactly a year ago. Oh, that's sign, right. To sign those Wolverine books. And it was your birthday and we went to that snake place. That's right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was the first gorgeous weekend here. Remember, and, um, we went to downtown. Beautiful weather. It was so crowded because everyone was like, this is amazing. <laughs> that was fun. That was, was awesome. Fun. Yeah. Crazy. People still watching? Mm -hmm. yeah. Like three people? Three. <laughs> no, that's nice. Thanks, guys. We're not, we're not going to stop broadcasting until everyone drops off. <laughs> <laughs> the challenge. It'll be four in the morning. We're like, please stop listening. They will just leave their computers on. They right. will have gone. Just to torture us. Yeah. Question from Nathan, who says, do you always try to incorporate the signature colors? You know how you were talking about Danny's signature color earlier on the boards? Uh, no, that kind of like dawned on me a few days ago. Um, I, I was always trying to actually like work more with just the colors in the art. Um, so something to complement what's, what's like on there already in the art. But then because I wanted to like you know, even with the horns making different from you know poster to poster, I, I started experimenting a bit, and then I was like, "Oh wait, I can actually the, the purple that Denny uses is really nice." Um, so, yeah. So the answer is really kind of like came to me only a couple of days ago. Brian is asking, "Are either of you friends with Jim Lee?" Um, I'd, I'd say we are. Yeah, yeah we've known him for for many years. Done he, some he, dinners. He may have given me a piggyback ride in San Diego. He he may have. <laughs> um, you've met Jim Lee before, though, right, Addy? Yep, yeah, but uh, you know, we're not friends or anything. We're just we friends. had dinner in China together. That's right, we yeah. did. Yeah. yeah, we all had dinner together. Yeah. Oh, I mean, we we know Jim. We just don't get to see him very often. No, I mean, you know. I, I like Jim, and I, I know I haven't spent completely like three hours with him, so I can't really call him a friend. Um, Roger's asking, uh, are there any animals that you would not want to draw, since you both like to draw animals? Um, tapeworm. Yeah. Which one? Tapeworm. Oh, oh, oh I forgot. <laughs> tapeworm. 
see what the, Addie's not mentioning is see, Addie's favorite animal is tapeworm, any kind of parasite. So if you see him at a show, um, you know, you really want to start a conversation, pull your phone out, look up a picture of a tapeworm or a parasite and come up and show it to Addie. It's his, it's his favorite thing to talk about. And, and he loves seeing new pictures. You probably, I challenge you to find a picture of a tapeworm he hasn't seen yet. He, I, I, would say, I would say that is very funny, except it's literally inciting violence. <laughs> <laughs> you will get punched. <laughs> Next to you, you are probably going to bear the brunt of it. So, <laughs> yeah, I, I, <laughs> I, 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 my would probably be pretty powerful. <laughs> so, I advise people not to do this because we're all in the. <laughs> Uh, what about you? What am I, I just don't like animals that don't have any kind of form. Like if someone says, "Oh, draw a jellyfish," I'm like, Ugh. you know, I, I I like um, I like form and 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 unique and interesting things to draw. Um, you know, I've never really enjoyed drawing bugs very much. Um, I mean, they can be fun, but you know, they don't. The, bugs don't really have a personality. Um, whereas you can incorporate personality in so many other different animals, um, which I mean, it could be a, a, a good thing because it, you know if you want to do something that's kind of like creepy, bugs are always because they, they lack personality. You know, you a lot of them you can't even see their eyes. There's a creepiness factor to it, which is kind of cool, but you know, not my favorite. Love drawing tapeworms though. Yeah, I shouldn't have said anything. It's my own. <laughs> That's good. Addie, I feel that way about Suriname toads. And if you guys don't know what a Suriname toad is, look it up. Blah. Well, oh. you have a, what's it called? Tryptophobia? Or? I, ha I have trypophobia. Trypophobia, that's it. It's um, basically she doesn't like... Uh, what is it? The look of a bunch of holes grouped together. Sounds more like fear of traveling. Yeah. Well, you know, when I uh, Google the trip hotel in New York, oh, the yeah. first thing that comes up is a bunch of like trypophobia images. So I have to be really like <laughs> quick with the clicks. <laughs> Oh hey, did you did you see that movie uh, called Prospect? Uh, I don't think so. It's from a guy who's a Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. uh, it's a science fiction movie, kind of a indie science fiction movie, but really well done. Uh, the costume is really really cool, and um, overall, I just really liked it. We just watched what? it last night. What's it about? Um. This um, girl gets stranded on a planet and she has to catch uh, the last uh, spaceship off out of the system. Oh, is this a Netflix movie? And, uh, we watched it on Amazon. I think I know what you're talking about. I think I saw the, um, I saw it on the list. Um, she with the guy who's in Mandalorian uh, to like get to the ship like i don't know how far yeah and it's kind of it's just getting from one part of this planet to the other and the things that they kind of like deal with but uh has a really good mood and really uh, i really like the space suit design well, i do really like science fiction so i'll check it out yeah uh, uh, for those aspiring artists among us, other than lots of practice, of course, what would you say the best way to experience to learn and improve your techniques? Um, boy, that's a loaded question, actually. Uh, I mean, it, it really it is a lot of practice and trying to understand uh, 
A, why what you're trying to achieve looks a certain way, and then B, how to use the tools to achieve it. Uh, and I know it sounds quite abstract, but it's, it's, it's kind of like, you know, when you're drawing from a photo and just copying what you're seeing versus looking at the photo and trying to understand why it's light and shadow are a certain way. So as opposed to just copying what you're seeing, actually trying to understand what it is that you're seeing. Yeah, that the shadow is falling because the light is coming from this direction or, you know, that the form... Uh, uh, is 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 you know the volume kind of like uh, road space and all of that stuff. So it's a lot of observing and trying to absorb and understand what it is that you're looking at. To me, I think that's probably the most important thing that I've ever kind of learned is actually that that had to understand what it is that I'm looking at before I can actually try to. Uh, either replicate it or create something new that obeys the laws of Yeah, I mean, I, I really couldn't put it better than what Addy just said. I mean, it does come down to, you know, and this is why when I'm at conventions and things and I see people walk up and want me to see their artwork and I can tell that they are, they're not trying to draw correctly. They're trying to draw in a style that, because they like it. And most of the time it's, it's anime or manga and, you know, which is fine. If you like it, that that's great. But anime and manga are so exaggerated and so bent from reality that nine times out of 10, I can tell that the person trying to mimic this style has no idea why they're doing what they're doing. They just saw it being done on an anime. And so they're like, they're doing it too, but have no clue what, what the rhyme or reason behind it is. And um, it's really, um, you know, if you want to be a fan artist, it's fine. But if you want to draw for a living, it's very destructive. Um, because what you're doing is you're learning some terribly bad habits that before, before you're going to be able to get good, you have to, are going to have to unlearn. So not only are you not learning anything, you actually are creating such bad habits that you are, you're going backwards. Um, and as Addy said, you know, you need to learn what and why as well as the how so you know if you're going to draw in a style you have to know why they're doing what they're doing and what part of reality they're bending uh to to, to do that and until you know that all you're doing is going to be mimicking somebody and not actually understanding why it is you're doing what you're doing no i mean th that's why uh, i always used to kind of be like the people are like oh you need to do you know like Life drawing, life drawing, and I'm like, oh, enough with drawing. But actually, it's not about the actual act, but it gives you, it forces you into quickly summarizing and understanding and processing what it is that you're looking at. So, mm -hmm. like five minutes, five minutes to kind of like see, understand, process, and you know kind of translate into a quick drawing. Um, and it's only, you know, as I got older that I started appreciating all that kind of like boring art school advice that I used to get. And I, you know, I'd be like, oh no, yeah, it's going to be. Well, that's why gesture, gesture drawing comes in so handy. Oh, yeah. You know, you're learning the, learning the basics and, and, you know, because behind everything there's gesture, which is just normally a very quick, or a quick, pose um that you're kind of building everything around and so if you're forced to do these like like you're saying these 30 second or three minute or whatever gesture drawings you you, you learn to get the basics of a figure or the basics of a landscape or the basics of an animal before you start getting into the nitty-gritty of all the detail work how's that looking that's great It looks better on my phone for some reason. You know. Yeah, it looks kind of washed out, doesn't it? Yeah. It's not that washed out in person. Oh, well. Um, CB's on, joined us as well. Awesome. Hey, CB. CB, for you guys that don't know, is the editor-in-chief. What? 
Is he incognito? He's the editor in chief of Marvel and uh, close friends with Addy and I. Yeah. Hey, what? We're talking about doing a Zoom dinner party. That dinner would be party. awesome. Yeah. yeah, I think he's already done a couple. I believe yeah. he did some with some some of the local guys. Um, Matthew's asking, what are your favorite mediums to work with? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm a very mixed media kind of artist. I mean, I guess my basis has always been marker, but then I'll, you know, I, I end up using color pencil and acrylic and gouache. And, you know, by the time I finish a piece, it normally has four or five different mediums um, on it. It's so new. I know. I, I really love acrylics. Pencil is like favorite thing, but I just love it. It's one of those things that like I used to find acrylics intimidating. That the the like ma mastery of acrylics has been my life long goal. And to actually now be able to do things, pretty much anything that I want with acrylics is, is, is like a really satisfying thing. Any more questions? Mm -hmm. Pop, pop, pop. Fixer <laughs> up with digital 3D. What's that? Do you guys ever mix your art with digital 3D? Uh, generally, no. Um, I'll use uh, SketchUp models sometimes um, just to save some time. Um, I did it a lot when I worked on the Han Solo book, only because, ships. yeah, the ships. I ended up building 3D models of a lot of the ships so that I could, it would just maybe be able to go much faster because that is a lot of ships to draw. Um, but, uh, you know, I always... I always tell people that I'm always hesitant to admit that I used a 3D model for anything because I feel like two things. A, I feel like people think I'm using a crutch, which I'm not. I'm doing it to save time. And B, I don't want anyone to hear it and think that it's an excuse for them to be able to do it because anything I've used a 3D model for, I've done it simply to save time and meet my deadlines. And anything I've used, I can draw. Um, it's it's not a case of I can't do it. I'm just trying to save time. So, you know, if just because I use them doesn't mean you can't if you don't know how to use them, how to draw in the first place. So, thank you for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> I do um I do digital painting when I do uh, concept art often um, because it's. Uh, do like you know three four different designs within the same painting uh easily you know switch out designs and move stuff around and stuff like that so for concept art it's uh um quite um, like well a great tool but uh for my illustration work i don't mix anything i just uh, um paint I do digital sketch dry paintings again because I can move stuff around and until I get it just right. Uh, okay, there's a question: How do you avoid uh, getting heavy brush strokes in your paintings? How do I avoid it? Yeah. Uh, actually, think that should be looked at the other way. I, I wish I could get more heavy brush strokes in my work. 
uh, and I've been trying to work on it because uh, I have a tendency to make stuff a bit too smooth and uh, uh, I, I prefer actually to have a bit more texture in it. And But the reason why it ends up smooth is just because um, uh, you can dilute the paint and do uh, like glazing, so like many, many layers of paint and build up volume and uh, and uh, also with the airbrush, you can smooth stuff out. So uh, it's it's always one of those things that like going back and forth and trying to find a balance between that kind of smooth tightness and then the energy of brush strokes. Um, so I think a lot of people seem to make mistake with acrylics where they almost use them straight out of the tube. Which obviously gives you quite like harsh nostril. You need to be patient and just like build and build. And actually, if you look at my art, there are quite a lot of nostrils in there. It's just that they're quite small and layered. So then they build into this kind of illusion of, of smooth. Um, and like Esad says, it's it's all about the size of the brush. So if you use a large brush, you you can create like big brush strokes and then if you want to get tighter and tighter and tighter you just go smaller and smaller and smaller until you can't really see the brush strokes unless up close Good advice. Mm -hmm. do you guys ever work in other mediums like oils photography sculpture i i don't like oil because they take forever to dry uh I actually I, I like like working in them. You can blend and work paint into paint and like you know, but just I can't wait a week for something to draw. <laughs> but Addy, you do you do like photography just like you have good cameras and just like taking pictures and things like that. I mean well, yes. I <laughs> I have really good cameras now whether I use them. <laughs> to their potential. <laughs> uh, no, I have a really good camera that I photograph artists. Uh, and then I have a, a good, like, camera camera. But um, I used to take a lot more kind of reference photos with my light setup. And especially when I was doing the Darth Vader cover, I used the Darth Vader action figure quite a lot. And then I would set up the lights and, uh, you know, do the backlight and do the, you know, all kinds of reflections and all of that stuff, but I mean, it would take like half a day. And then in the end, I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm just going to invent it rather than have all you know use all this time to, to photograph the reference. Mm -hmm. I'd love to do more sculpture. I absolutely love sculpture. I just have, I mean, just you know, only so many minutes in a day. Yeah. What about you? Um, no, I really don't. I mean, I, I, I like to experiment. I, I should experiment more. Um, you know, I, I, I do some customizing on 12 inch action figures sometimes probably the closest to it. A, a lot of crafting involved. It is a lot of crafting and fabrication involved with that. And I really enjoy that. Um, I haven't done it in a while, but I, I do like doing it when so I have a chance. Adam used to get together. Yeah, Adam Hughes and I used to do a lot of like customizing and stuff. We would, you know, paint and cutting leather and. They have uh, really cute craft play dates. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you do do those amazing uh, wall paintings in your own pool. That's true. <laughs> That's true. Good green. I wanted to keep that between you and I, Addie. I've only shared that with you. <laughs> yes, this is definitely my favorite remark I've done. It's gorgeous. Yeah, it really is beautiful, man. Uh, it's just, um, in person, the colors look much better than they do to me on the screen. That this light is really washing him out. Let me see. I can. Uh, I know it's going grainy, but that's more color. Is closer. Very cool.
Well, I'm finished. You're done? I am done. I just need to sign it. Start another one. I will. I will. Brian is asking, who is your favorite superhero or villain? Um, I don't like Magneto when I was a kid. Magneto was Nito. <laughs> I don't have a favorite superhero or villain. I'm a terrible comic book fan. <laughs> There are. I do like Doctor Doom. Actually, yes, my favorite villain is Galactus. I was gonna I say will, Galactus, right? I will go on record as to say that. Okay. Um, I like Magneto. Yeah. Oh, this is tough once I hit the foil. Question for you both. Why are you doing such detailed remarks on posters, but not on comic books? Uh, uh, <laughs> well, the, there's, there, there's an answer to that, but I don't know if they're going to like that answer. The, the reason is the, the value of it. Yeah. These... Uh, uh, we sell these for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. So if someone would like to pay me what I make off these posters to sketch on their comic book, I'll be happy to give them a sketch this detailed. Yep. And real estate. I mean, comics are... Yeah, they are smaller, yeah. It would be really hard without covering up most of the cover. Yeah. It's such a space. Yeah. It's true. Whoa. Is that thunder? Yeah. Wow. That just came out of nowhere. Hush. <laughs> thunder, the dog's barking, the child is screaming. Ooh, Lulu's not happy. No, she's going to go high upstairs now. Oh, baby, you can go up the stairs this way. Um, there's a question. What are the artists that you think most influence or inspire your work? Um, I don't know. Mark Silvestri was always a big, I mean, we've talked about this last time, but he's a big influence on me. Um, uh, Elgren, the pinup artist from the 50s. What? I am. You want to come say hi? No. Say hi. Wait, what are you doing? We're live streaming. Good luck. Uh, say hi to Ed. Uh, say hi, Jack. Why, why do you sound like you're 20 years old? <laughs> it just happened in the last, like, two weeks. How old do you think my dad is? He's 57. No, he's 85. <laughs> <laughs> Close, kind of. Wow, your voice is... It's different, isn't it? Isn't that crazy? Like, hello. <laughs> hello, ladies. <laughs> it's me, Jack. <laughs> Do either of you have plans to write your own comic book? No. <laughs> <laughs> I write a cookbook. Oh, okay. Yep. I will write down all the time for different ready meals, how long they take to microwave. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
downside right. of these paint markers is I have to wait for them to dry uh, to move on to the next color. So I'm stuck sitting here basically just staring at it. Sorry, guys. I will lift my bed now. So. That's great. Joseph has a question. Hi, Joseph. Um, he wants to know if there's a movie poster that either of you would love to recreate, or that like possibly an image that would originally photos instead of artwork. Um, probably the original uh, Mad Max poster because it's really bad. Ah. That's true. You still owe me a Mad Max poster. I do. Um, I, I, I really think it was a missed opportunity for Marvel Studios not to use artwork for their, because I, I think that Marvel does a great job of revolutionizing some things with film. And I think one thing they missed out on was bringing the, the idea of um, hand-drawn posters back. Because, I mean, the characters are already based on artwork, so it seems like it would have been a no-brainer to make the, the Marvel posters artwork as well. Um, I mean, I know that companies like Mondo do them still. Uh, they do their own, you know, artwork posters. But I, I would love to have seen the original releases and maybe even gotten a chance to work on work on them. Ah, this is definitely done. So it's great. Um, and the remark. Wow, almost looks like a photograph. Pretty amazing, dude. Thanks. You look like you're getting close as well, Mark. Yeah, I am. I'm just finishing the flames now. Oh, I'm going to start on a second one. Since okay. we're already here. I penciled a second one as well, so I'm, I'm good to go on another one, too. I don't know if people actually want to watch us do, do more than one, but... You're hitting an hour and a half. There will be well, I'll go ahead and tell you, my second one I'm doing is a scolopus. Sounds terrible. <laughs> Worse than the corn times? No. <laughs> is that the times when you eat corn? No, it's the times when you quarren. Oh. You hate seed? Something. I'm going to throw something else, but I'm going to keep it for another time. <laughs> and Mark and I say it so much now, it's just, it sounds normal to me. Like, I can't even say quarantine. <laughs> you can't say quarantine. Quarantine. I did say quarantine. The quarantines. Yeah, I can't even say those words now. For both of you, from uh, Scott, which is uh, 20 years ago, the focus seemed to be on penciling or inking. What are your thoughts on the evolution of pencil and inks, the zipper tone, and then almost all going digital and now back to going fully painted through? Has it gone fully back to painted through? I think there are only a few people doing it. I think the ink is kind of a dino. Long because they go pencil straight to color often. Uh, but I, I'm the wrong person to ask because I've never actually worked in that, that kind of a process. I've always done my own stuff, uh, like everything. Yeah. He's not listening. I'm sorry, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> was it about pencil and ink? It was 20 years ago, the focus seemed to be on penciling or inking. What thoughts on the evolution of penciled ink, zipper tone, and then almost going all digital, now kind of back to going fully the painting traditional? <sighs> well, I think it really depends. I mean, you know, so many guys. Yeah, well, I mean, if you think about covers, I mean, I think a lot of people have gone to the kind of the, the painterly route or at least markers and things like that. But I think interior work still done pen and ink. Uh, 
Yeah, I didn't think about that. Sorry, I kind of took it as inferior stuff, but yeah, for cover. Uh, I mean, I don't know. I think it, it, it. I think people like to see, especially with covers, they like to see kind of like something that is a bit more artistic, and I think that's why painted covers are are popular because. Um, <laughs> Like, uh, Tamsin is killing a cat. <laughs> That's not me. It's not me. Here, he's gonna. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> Gotta be Loki. <laughs> there he is. Check him out. There's the six-toed cat. Oh, I love him. I love him so much. He's a monster. He is. He's very loud. <laughs> Oh, he's so cute. He's a panther. He is a panther. Yeah. I was um on the bench the other uh, the, the, earlier today doing a bench press, and he kept getting behind me on the bench. So every time I would lower myself down, I'd squish him. Yeah. <laughs> and I, like that time I, I kept I kept pushing him off, and then. I thought he wasn't there, and obviously he jumped when I didn't look, and I actually like went down on him, and he was like, ah, and ran off and wouldn't come back. <laughs> <laughs> but he's fine now. He's a big cat. I, I he can handle it. Squish him to death. It sounds like he's going to do a hairball. Oh no, not on the live stream, Loki. <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna do a hairball. <laughs> I, I don't know, he, he's just kind of like doing a bit of a... Like, <sighs> I'm about to hear it. Are you done? Did you swallow it? Great. <laughs> Great. <laughs> <laughs> oh Sorry, guys. Oh, I love yeah. it. I like to say he's not always slimy, but he, 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 he is. Martin is asking, "What's your favorite roller coaster, Mark?" Oh God. <laughs> Um, you know what though? I actually don't mind um, the 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 just kind of the up and down those rickety um, wooden coasters. The uh, the scream machine uh, we have at Six Flags here is pretty fun. I just don't like the sling you around, twist you around, throw you upside down. That's that's terrible. I don't know why anybody would do that to themselves. Psychopaths. Who's your favorite album cover artist? This is from what's the one? I'm sorry if I pronounced that horribly. Because uh, he was asking what you think about Derek Riggs, who loved Brian Maynard's covers. Who's your favorite album cover artist? Oh, boy. Who's the guy that did Appetite for Destruction, the inside cover? Oh, good question. Robert? No. I'd have to look it up. I know who you mean. I love his stuff. Um... He's still around. I think he's still alive. I really like Dave McKean. He did a lot of uh, industrial like skinny and uh, frontline assembly. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, he's done a ton of stuff that um, we like. Greg Capullo did a really badass cover for Corn. That's right. Yeah. Follow the leader. Mm hmm. For Quorn? Yeah, the, the follow the, their first big album, Follow the Leader. All right, dry, dry, dry. You want to drink anything? Uh, I think I'm okay. What time is it? It's not cocktail time? Yeah. Ha, ha. Ooh, I might have some sake. Ooh, nice. it's cocktail time for you guys, yeah. Yeah. True. It's cocktail time. Addy can have his um, children's mocktail. I've been drinking ginger beer. 
No, I'm all right. Thank you. I'm just going to noodle on these other parts while I'm waiting for the flames to dry so I can do the orange and yellow. Man, I don't know if you guys can hear this. It is coming down here. We are having a gross Easter. The weather here was amazing yesterday. Today it was a bit more overcast. Yeah. Yesterday was amazing. Yeah, yesterday was nuts. So nice. I'm using my nice soft glasses in the front face. Huh? Nice. Very nice. <gasps> They're fancy. And schmancy. Are people getting bored with us yet? I'm, I'm bored. <laughs> um, Shane's asking how the foil is taking the... Uh, this part up here is... Um, I have to go over it a couple of times to get it to go on the foil. But the, the, the foil is only on... It's on her blades and it's on her arms and obviously the key. Basically, you can kind of see where the foil is, but there's no foil here. There's no foil down here at the bottom. So it's, it takes it actually really well. When you're gonna see me struggle is when I finish this one and when I pull out the Atlanta poster that has the octoskull on it, that's gonna be, uh, th that's, that's a bit of a challenge. Have either of you ever worked with Alex Gray? No. Nope. You know, um, being an illustrator or an artist is kind of a solitary life. You don't end up working with other artists very often. Who is your favorite tool member? <laughs> <laughs> Well, um, well, I think that well, Addy and I both know Adam, so it would probably be Adam. No, I, I hate him. <laughs> no, I, I, Adam. I mean, he's amazing. Um, but I'm a drummer. I was a drummer all through high school, and I was in a band for a bit of college. And um, Danny is just God. He's insane. He's so good. Did you see that video of him playing? Um, uh, oh, shit, which song was it that I. Oh, I think it's Numa. Uh, and he, he, it's like professionally recorded with uh, GoPros all over on his kit. Oh, I did see that, yes. Wow, it's incredible. By the way, Alberto, to the rescue, who said Robert Williams did the art for the government. Yes, I didn't. I knew it was Robert something. Yeah. Is he still alive? I think he is. Who would win in a fight? <laughs> <laughs> oh, the talk between you and I. Yeah. Oh boy, we would never fight. Mar um, Addy would do like a. Punching wrestling stance, and then Mark would uh, challenge him to like a spelling bee or something. <laughs> um, I don't fight, I just stab. <laughs> That's right, you're Bosnian. <laughs> Mark would run. <laughs> uh, I, I'm in the South. We run you over with a pickup truck. Martin, Joe Martin, Martin Kate, is asking what is the funniest thing that's happened to you both at a convention? The funniest thing? Oh. I was, I was about to say something really rude. No, <laughs> no, 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 no rude story. Very funny story. Um, I don't know if anything really funny happened. Lots of funny things happened, but I think... Just, Nothing like... Yeah. We laugh a lot, but I don't know 
It's probably because we're insane. Well, yeah, it's, it's only because we're, we're, we're slap happy from sitting there drawing all day and we're just basically making each other laugh. But it's always just normally us just busting each other's balls or something like that. But I don't know if there's any really funny stories. I'm sure there has to be a funny story. I'm thinking. I mean, I, I had I had a, a really funny thing. Uh, it, it was with Esad and, and, and my friend Ken uh, when we were in San Diego. And when uh, in San Diego, uh, for those who don't know, there are hotels all around the convention center, and the convention center is massive. So one hotel can be like, I, I don't even know, at least. It could feel, it could feel like a mile or more. I, yeah, I mean, it's like a mile away, so like Hard Rock to, to the Marriott. And they have these um, people that like have those like, uh, um, what are they called? Rickshaws. Rickshaws with like bicycle rickshaws. And uh, both Esad and Ken are quite big guys. And they're like, oh, let's get a rickshaw to, to, to the uh, Marriott. And I was like, oh, I really don't want to do it. It's three of us now. And, and they're like, oh, no, no, let's do it. And I was like, okay, if only if we can find the smallest girl to do it. <laughs> I will well, uh, well let's, let's preface this by saying that, that what do, every summer, all these, um, all they're these, Europeans. they're all Europeans, they're all like, like Eastern Europeans. Italian. Yeah, but they, they come in and they basically work for these rickshaw companies over the summer. So they're all like basically kids. They're like, they're like, like college kids. Um, anyway, go ahead, Addy. Yeah, but they're mostly, all of them are like really fit guys. Yeah. So, yeah. To avoid having to go on this rickshaw, that's why I said it. And just as I said it, Esad is like, "Oh, there she is!" And it was this tiny girl. And to her credit, she was like, "Oh yeah, yeah, I'll take you." And three of us, between us, we must have been like three hundred kilos. Um, and Which to an American is what about six hundred and fifty, seven hundred pounds or so? Something like that, yeah. And we squeezed into this rickshaw, three of us, and. It was so heavy. We were being passed by all of the other rickshaws. <laughs> then we got stuck in the tram tracks with the bus coming our way. So we had to kind of put our feet out and like push ourselves along. Anyway, uh, we also ended up running into a fence because she was really struggling to control it. And I ripped my shirt. Um, and then finally, we got to, to the Marriott and we paid a triple. Uh, very happy, obviously, but yeah. Anyway, she had to work extremely hard for that. I, I don't. I don't really know if that, uh, it was a very funny thing that happened. Then I don't if, know if it's a funny story. What about the New York cab ride that we took? Our drunk cab ride. Oh, the one was with uh, Olivia Coipel. Well, there's. Oh God, we have so many. Like we were drunk in New York at New York Comic Con stories. <laughs> What's the other one you're talking about? The, the one where we went bar hopping, and then we left everybody and jumped in the cab. Oh well, yeah, this was pretty funny. We were at the Marvel party. Well. What, we were staying in uh, like on 35th and 8th or something like that. And um, the Marvel party was on Saturday night. And we had been out to a restaurant and a couple other places. We that we, hopped yeah, we bar hopped a bit. Then we got to, the, we ended up at the Marvel party and we hung out there for, you know, a couple of hours. And then it was, you know, it was pretty late. It was like two in the morning or something like that. And we're like, okay, it's time to go, you know. So we, we go outside There's and we. There's a group of us outside. Yeah. Say yeah. Yeah. At the Marvel party, everybody can because a lot of smokers. Everybody hangs out outside. So we're saying bye to everybody, you know, and, and, and we hail a cab and we get in the cab and we're like, you know, oh, we're going to the trip window. It's on 35th and 8th. And he went, okay. And so we got in. He literally drove about 150 feet <laughs> and then stopped and was like, 350. Here you go. We're like, I mean, we, we were so close to the Marvel part that we got out and everyone at the party staring at us. So we're like, good night. <laughs> we are uh, so stupid. Thompson and I had the same thing happen to us in London. We, we got our. We were London newbies. Yep. And we, we got out of the train station and <laughs> we hailed a cab and we said before we got in, we said where we wanted to go. And he was like, okay, get in. And he literally <laughs> turned the corner. <laughs> he literally <laughs> turned the corner. I was pretty mad. <laughs> we, we weren't mad. We were laughing so hard, uh, you know, because we were drunk. So, and we were waving at everybody. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Tell them Olivier Coipel. Oh, okay. So, um, so another we, incident. this is another, another year or two later. 
We, I think you guys were with us, Addy. No, they weren't. They were that with us? I thought they were. Um, anyway, we were hanging out with Olivia Coipel, another uh, another famous Marvel artist and super, super talented. And there was a, a whole bunch of us. Yeah, a whole bunch of us, a big group of us. And we had been to a restaurant or something like that. And at, and, uh, and at some point, we were all leaving to go someplace. We were going to go to the bar. We were just going to walk back. And Olivia is like, oh, I'm going to get a cab. I'll, you know, I'll take off. And Olivia is very French. He's, he talks like this. He's Olivia Coppel. Um, and so, uh, we're walking back to the, back to the, to wherever we were walking. There's a group of probably seven or eight of us and a cab goes by us and someone is yelling out the window at us. And it's because, night, it's dark yeah, it's dark. We can't see who it is. And, um, and so all of us are like, cause we're in New York. We're like, Hey, fuck you. You know, we're flicking at the bird. We're like, you know, fuck you, man. <laughs> and so, you know, and then we walk on and we go back. And the next day, Olivier comes up and he goes, you were so mean to me. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? He goes, I was driving with a cab and I saw you and I hung out the window and I was like, hey, hey, hey. And you all were so mean. And I and he slouched back into the cab and the cab driver said, do you know them? And he went, I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Good times in New York. So anyway, thank you for that question, Martin. That kept us going for quite a while. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> By the way, Mark will really like this comment. Um, it's for Abby. Uh, it's from Jorge, who says, For Abby, I love the work you did of Venom on the Plains. <laughs> <laughs> I love the work you did of Venom on the Plains. Oh, love it. <laughs> uh, it's one of the coolest things I've ever done. It is very cool. I just like busting your balls about it. Now, every time we're in public and Addy someone brings it up or Addy brings it up, I do the same thing every time, which is to go, what, you painted on a plane? <laughs> I, I did. <laughs> <laughs> you never told me about that. Thank you, Mark. <laughs> I mean, not just what I did, but like being there at Duxford with all of those airplanes and, you know, working for two days with like fires and uh, flying up and down. And it was just incredible. No, it's really awesome. All experiences. It was amazing. And I'm pretty impressed that I actually got it done in two days. Because you should tell the story of the fact that you've never done anything like that before. I, I, I have never done anything like that yet. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what, what, I mean, you know, you either do or do not, and I decided to do. No, it turned out really cool. Yeah. And there's actually pictures of it flying. Yeah. I think it, I, I think it's still on the airplane. I think they like it so much, but it's still on there. Yeah, I think they left it on there. Wow. They were going to like paint over it at some point, but they liked it enough, I guess, that they just left it on indefinitely until it flakes away. Because the original livery of the airplane, the white, is actually underneath the black. Because mm. I painted on the black, but actually the, the black is this special type of paint that can be um, washed off. Um, so my painting is actually on a temporary surface. Oh, I didn't realize that. It ended on there only for a couple of months, but it ended up being actually on there for a couple of years. I wonder if they, well, I assume they could probably seal it or something, right? No, they didn't want to because the airplane is a 1950s airplane and uh, to seal it would probably be too dangerous for the original uh, paint job underneath. Ah. So. So it was just painted on. Yep. What, uh, 
what music are you two listening to currently at the moment? Question from Matthew. He says he's been listening to the new Nine Inch Nails and uh, Child of Um. Well, I mean, I play Tool at least a couple of times a week, but then um, um, played a lot of Touch Mode, uh, New Order still. I don't. Yeah, Ghost. Yeah, Ghost and well, Riverside. I really like. Yeah, Riverside. Um, yeah. An old night. Oh yeah, just there we did. Now it's spiral. Um, in the studio, I've been listening to uh, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. Believe it or not, a Ooh. bit lately. Um, ah. so, yeah. When we were in Nashville, uh, Adam was playing in his dressing room. He was playing uh, Moon Fever. Uh, oh, that's awesome! I was extremely happy. Their stuff is so good. I mean, it really is. You, you know, it, it, they're one of those bands you kind of forget about. Yeah. And then you realize just how many songs they did that were just huge hits. And, and um, I, I got into him a couple of years ago when Tom Petty died. I, yeah. I was reminded of it and, you know, downloaded the Greatest Hits album and just still still going back to it. We were reminded last night, we were watching a documentary on Netflix that's about um, all the kind of rap rock bands in the um in the late 80s and early 90s it was all about um LA yeah the la culture and like the tattoo and art culture uh, along with the music it was like a uh, cypress hill um everlast uh just a bunch of these 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 like these kind of like hispanic white rock you know very la, very LA rap bands that were back in that time and it's really interesting to watch it was mostly focused on this photographer and this um, tattoo artist called um, called a uh, cartoon. Cartoons. Yeah, Mr. Cartoon, um, who's a tattoo artist, and, and apparently this guy is. I mean, he's tattooed everybody, and he charges an arm and a leg. Um, I, I'm not even a huge fan of his art. It's just fascinating that he's um, he 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 basically marketed himself so well that. You know, he'll do these massive, like that big 50 cent tattoo, you know, that big tattoo 50 cent has on his back. This is 50. Uh, Mr. Cartoon did that tattoo. Uh, He's tattooed Eminem and, um, and, uh, uh, who else? Um, everybody, Dr. Dre. Yeah. Um, um, uh, Cypress Hill. Yeah. A lot of the Wu Tang Clan, guys like that. Um, but yeah, apparently, like a tattoo, like that 50 cent tattoo that he did. That's like a fifty thousand dollar tattoo for the charges. Wow. Um, but it's a really fascinating documentary, especially if you were into that kind of like rock rap kind of like. Because I mean, that was I, I really got into that stuff back in the day. I mean, I I, I burned a hole in the in the um, the Cypress Hill album and um, Three Eleven. I was really huge into Three Eleven there for a red hot minute. Um, so that was really cool. By the way, question from Joanna for you. Um, and this will probably be an easy question in a way, uh, because I was going to say it's like choosing between the children, but as Mark and Lisa only have one, and Abby and I have zero, that's technically not that hard. But which <laughs> favorite tool poster design that you've done? Well, I've only done two. <laughs> <laughs> but choose um, from the two. Choose from the two. Um, I, uh, I don't know. It's the, the, I, I'm, I'm so honored that I got a chance to do them that like picking from your favorite child. It really is. <laughs> I mean, I feel like I like the Atlanta one a little better only because I felt like I got my groove a little more. I think I, there was an intimidation factor with the first one, um, in Boston, which I'm, I'm very proud of. I really like the way it came out, but, um, there were some things I probably would have done differently had I been able to kind of get out of my own head a little more. Have you been better? Have I been better? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I've been better. No, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely proud of both of them. I like the way they both came out. I mean, it's why I'm, that's why I, I like drawing on them so much. Do you have a favorite, Daddy? 
I have a favorite of yours. <laughs> I know yours. <laughs> Nashville? Yeah. Yeah. Nashville's my favorite too. Yeah, I love that one. Um, uh, my favorite isn't even a poster, it's a Tempest piece. Yeah, I love that one. Yeah. Probably. I, um, yeah, that's probably my favorite. Just because I love that song so much. And yeah, it, I know. It was inspired by the song. Yep. It'll be used as a poster at some point. Yeah, it will eventually, I'm sure. This yellow is giving me fits. Aaron's asking if either of you, I mean, Abby would, because Abby would really, like, would have listened to it. But Mark, do you like the Traveling Wilburys? No, not really. Um, a little too folky for me. It's a bit too, yeah, I don't know. I think maybe the Tom Petty and the Heartbreak and stuff, I always like to have like more like, like bluesy rock yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah the same. same. And there was something kind of like, you know, with Tom Petty, there was something kind of like creepy about some of the music. Like, what was that? Uh, Don't come around here no more. Where the video was all done, like um, uh, Alice in Wonderland. Oh yeah. That's it's 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 a really. I mean, if you haven't seen the video or don't remember it, you should go to YouTube and look up. Video, so. Oh, the video is great, but it's it's really kind of kind of creepy. Oh, come on. Why is the red and orange and yellow oh. take so long to dry? Yeah. Question for you. Uh-huh. How, uh, or actually, Addy, I guess, could I answer as well, but, but how do you decide what part is oil versus the rest of the image? Like, is it a poster? How do I decide where, say, say that again, sorry? Which part is oil on the poster? Oh, I, I didn't. I, I actually, um, when we send the posters in, uh, Adam decides that stuff. Um, I just did the image and, uh, you know, and I think that with the first run of posters, none of us knew um, what they were going to do with them. So we didn't have any way of knowing, um, you know, what was going to be foil and what wasn't. In fact, when I first saw the poster, I, I, I saw it, um, people taking pictures of it before I even saw the, actually got my posters. Um, and I couldn't tell whether the whole thing was foil or just part of it was. It wasn't until I got it in my hands that I realized that only they had basically clipped out some of these parts of her and made it foil, but left other stuff, you know, matte, which I, I thought was pretty cool. Um, but the second round of them, the, the entire thing is done in the, uh, what do they call it? Addy prismatic foil. Uh, sounds, sounds plausible. Sounds fancy. All right, this is about done if I can get this orange and yellow to dry. You know what I may do? I may move on to the next one while I wait for this to, this to dry and come back to the, the flames. But get the general idea. Looks great. The birth of the third eye. Thanks, man. All right. Are you done? Yeah, I so. Well, I'm going to come back and slide, but I think I'm going to need a bit to dry. Oh, watch the chandelier. All right. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you guys can see it, but if you can kind of see that, can you see the... Not yet. It's not... There's a little lag. Do you two have a favorite horror film? No, I don't watch horror. I, I, I love horror movies. Um... I would say, I, I think just as, as far as just being a perfectly well-made horror movie, I mean, you got to go with like Alien, I would think. Oh, yeah. I mean, I love, I love science fiction horror movies. I like yeah. typical horror movies I really don't like. You like, you like uh, Event Horizon. Yeah, but that's a science fiction horror movie. Yeah, yeah. They count. Okay. Yeah, it counts. Well, then 
not alien, but aliens for me. And I like Heaven Horizon, yeah. Uh, now, see, to me, Aliens is not a horror movie. No, it's an action movie. Action. Yeah. Yeah. Alien is more of a horror than I think it would I hate horror movies. <laughs> you liked the first It, though, didn't you? Well, it was okay. I, I mainly, I, it's not that I don't like horror in general. I just think the, the vast majority of horror movies are, they're just not good movies. <laughs> well, that, that's the problem. Yeah. I mean, it, it's hard to find good ones. Yeah, like they're really good. I don't like me scared, so I don't. <laughs> 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 yeah, being scared just sucks. Yeah, I take I, I take things to heart too much, and I think about them a lot. Yeah, I yeah. Technically, um, like Annihilation, kind of horror. It is a bit horror. Uh, yeah. I like Annihilation, and then Color Out of Space is a kind of horror. horror. So was Mandy. So was Mandy. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. So. We saw that. I do well, like. We saw Mandy. We did? Or maybe I saw it without you. You saw it, I think. You watched it. I did like Color Out of Space. Yeah, it was fun. Thank you, Joanna. She said, um, Tamsin and Lisa, it's always a pleasure to interact with you guys. Thanks for being part of these. And then she's um, asking, did I do anything fun for Mark's birthday? Um, so we are in the quarantines. So. <laughs> um, but I, I put together a, a montage a photo slideshow. Um, some people um, sent me some really nice photos. So that was kind of a special thing. And then we watched it actually on our, our new TV. So we got to see it really big and I decorated all around the TV and then Tonight, I'm going to fix him a big fat steak for dinner. So. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, we don't normally do make big deals out of birthdays. We're just kind of, you know. We go big at, like, Christmas. Yeah. Um, yeah. How do you guys, this is a question from Martin again, how do you guys decide what is done and put down your tools. Do you ever have the urge to add more to a piece? Um, the, the, the old, uh, I don't remember what artist said this, but he said that um, no artwork, no piece of artwork is ever finished, only abandoned. Um, so it's not necessarily, yeah, well, like for me, I mean, obviously Addie and I are both drawing at the same time. So when Addie finished his, I was like, oh, so it's, you know, I need to, I need to kind of wrap up mine. Um, so you just kind of have to pick an ending point. I mean, I could sit there and noodle on anything I draw for, you know, hours and hours and hours. Um, that's why we always make the joke when it comes to our editors, like, you know, however much time you give me is as much time as I'm going to take. Um, because we could, we could noodle forever. What do you think, Addy? Um, I think with, um, the way I've been painting lately, I kind of definitely reach a point where I'm like, you know, it's it's done now. I can I can see it. Uh, when I used to do the uh, pencil rendering, I, I never could tell. I could just keep going and going and going. But with painting, I, I find it easier to judge where like I'm at a point and I'm like, okay, it's now finished. If I'm under deadlines, I always feel like I need more time. But, uh, uh, like that Emma Frost I did the other day, I, I definitely was like, well, it it's done. Um, so, yeah, it depends. Um, Have either of you been approached about doing a video game character or art? I've done many. Yeah, I think we both worked in video games. Um, I just did a piece recently for um, for the new Avengers game uh, that was released at New York Comic Con uh, last year. Um, was it the character uh, Thor game? I did some, yeah, I did some stuff for the Thor uh, Nintendo game. Um, 
actually that uh that avengers piece is is the cover for the steel book if you pre-order it through uh, best buy And then, and Eddie, you worked on the Spider-Man game. You did the, uh, you created the velocity suit. Yeah, I did the velocity suit, and I did the PlayStation, whatever it's called, home screen, and I did the uh, uh, covers for, um, yeah, the lo downloadable content, and then um, the new Iron Man virtual reality game that's coming out. I did. Um, the main suit design and then a few other designs in it as well. Plus I did the alternate box art for that. Um, so yeah, yeah, I mean, I've, I've done quite a lot of video game stuff. Yeah, yeah, my first, yeah, my first kind of proper art job was at Nintendo as a concept artist. I worked on Pokemon the first time around when Pokemon was actually brand new. Oh, wow. Yeah. Got to catch them all, Eddie. <laughs> yeah. I worked on a, it, it was like a Candy Crush type of game for Nintendo 64. Oh, wow. Uh, Puzzle League. Um, <laughs> oh, I remember Puzzle League. Well, yeah. There you go. There's a question for Addy about uh, growing up in Bosnia. How available were comic books and graphic novels, especially Marvel and DC? Um, European comics were available. They were part of life. The comics are really, really pop well used to be really popular there when I was a kid. So a lot of French and Italian comics. Um, American comics were not published in a kind of like they are here uh, in 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 you know separate issues. They would actually be collected in a magazine. So you would get a magazine and you would get, you know, it would maybe be uh, either monthly or bi weekly. And, um, uh, it, you know, you would have like an issue of a Spider Man story. And then, you know, a month later, you would have another issue, but published in a magazine. Mm -hmm. So they were available, but just not in a, in kind of like the same way as they are. Um, so I grew up on comics. It's just I didn't really read American comics that much. I read Spider-Man and Silver Surfer. Uh, I really started reading more American comics once I moved to the States. <laughs> Have we, um, uh, was any of the Pokemon Puzzle League concept art released? I don't think I have seen it. That's from Lewis. Hi, Lewis. Uh, I, 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 I have no idea. <laughs> I don't want to see it. You don't want to see it. I don't want anything to do with it. Well, so you should find it and post it. I have a, I have a plaque. That was given to everybody that worked on the game. Uh, I have it somewhere, and it like you know says, "Once the game shipped, we were given like a a plaque to like." Um, but um, yeah. I aside from the people I worked with, because there were some awesome people I worked with. I, I really did enjoy my time at Nintendo. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> nah, nah, nah. Our, our director was an asshole. <laughs> do you, um, either of you, hang your own artwork up on the walls, or do you prefer to like put it away or do something else with it? I prefer to sell it. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, I do have artwork on the walls of artists. I have, in fact, um, over here. Here, I can show you guys. This might look familiar. You're frozen. I have this in our dining in our living room. You're frozen. You Is it frozen? Uh, it's showing. 
You got it? So that's a piece of Addy's artwork. Addy, uh, that's the piece he did for, uh, for the Spider-Man game. The load screen, I believe. Mm -hmm. So we have that, um, and we have some other artwork hanging in various places. <laughs> Lisa's gotten up and moved because she didn't want to be on camera. <laughs> Do you have any uh, any viewers left? Any what, sorry? Viewers left? Oh. No, it stopped thundering. Do you uh, do either of you do illustrations using using drawing tablets and computers? How does it compare? Um, I think we both pencil on a um, on a Cintiq, so we, we we're, we're using a tablet for a lot of our um, our pencil work. Um, and uh, we both have iPad Pros that, uh, with a Procreate on it. So I know that uh, I, I've been working on it, and Addy, you've been playing around with it some, haven't you? Yeah, no, I worked on it, um, especially when we were in Mexico. I worked on it. Um, quite a bit um, yeah I mean I, I, I like painting digitally because it allows you to um, try different things as you're going uh, and, and if it doesn't work you can change it and you can alter it and stuff like that it's just that um, you know you don't end up with a that kind of physical piece of art and uh, I miss when I work digitally. I always miss the kind of the physicality of, of working traditionally. Uh, I learned to draw traditionally, and I, you know, didn't see a computer until I was eighteen. So, um, I, yeah, I, I just, I just you know, prefer traditional. It's just that digital really does make some things. Uh, much. Uh, it's not even necessarily easier; just quicker. So I can try things out and test them. And um, like I was working on, on some some movie stuff, and the painting I did that took me ten days would have probably taken me a month if I was doing it traditionally. And there's also a, a vibrancy and a glow that you can get from working digitally that you can't get. Uh, traditionally, or at least not near as easily. Um, yeah, I am. Um, I'm very wary of that. I um, I don't like to go too uh, vibrant digitally because uh, I always think of print, even though a lot of the stuff isn't necessarily meant for print. But I prefer to think of it. In a more kind of traditional um, uh, kind of ways, so I, I try not to go too like vibrant, right? Or at least I actually sometimes go more vibrant traditionally, because I, when I bring it into Photoshop and I convert it to CMYK, you just can't handle some of the colors that I've used. I, I'm actually surprised how many people when I post up a picture of the original painting I did, um, we're under the impression originally that it was done um, digitally. Mm. You always post the digital file versus the a picture of the painting. Right, but I'm saying that, that um, in, in some ways I've, I've captured a digital feel in the way that I, mm. I do my traditional work. I think it's because it's, you know, it is very vibrant and very, rendered so right. you know, I think a lot of people just you know, assume that, that that kind of finish would have, would be done yeah I think so I think so Thank you. 
question for a while ago that I didn't reach, and I don't know how close it is still online, but they were asking which of all the four shows that you've been to uh, was your, is your favorite? Um, the Nashville one we were at was amazing. That was pretty awesome, actually. Yeah. It was a little bit unusual. And the sound was great. The sound was awesome, yeah, because Atlanta show was great, but I, the sound was better in Nashville. Well, it was bad. No, no, it wasn't bad. It was just not. It, I was. Uh, well, when you see shows back to back, often also, uh, you, you you can appreciate the difference in sound between the venues. Uh, so, like when we went and saw him in uh, San Jose, and then Sacramento, and then San Bernardino, mm -hmm. Sacramento was. By far the best sound. It was incredible. Plus, in Nashville, there's a Richie Hall as well. Yeah. Which is kind of a fun. Yeah, Richie. Story. Yeah, Richie Faulkner from uh, Judas Priest joined Tool for uh, Jambi. And that was really amazing because it was kind of like a moment in history. Just, uh, you know, to see it's something different. Um, and it was really incredible. And then we actually went to hang out with him and his wife. Uh, so it was a really awesome show. And I did the poster for it. So, uh, uh, yeah, it was a kind of, yeah, everything about it was really great. Yeah, for me, it was, I mean, I've seen Tool twice now, and I've seen them both times in Atlanta. But the, the second Atlanta show was it was amazing not just because the show was just so good but you know the new album was out so they were playing stuff from the new album which i i loved um but jack my son who's 12 um it's his first concert and we got eighth row center thanks to adam and um and just was it was just it was absolutely amazing our son had a great time and he was really excited and they played stink fist and in fact, the, they, I think Stink Fist was there. I want to say it was the sixth or seventh song they played that night. And after every song before that, he would turn to me and go, is Stink Fist, is Stink Fist next? next? <laughs> and um, so when it came on, he was just like, yes. Because he had seen the set list back in Adam's dressing room. So, but he had forgotten the order. So, uh, but he knew it was coming. Uh, Kat is saying that she can't get over how much you you two are touching the prince. She only touches them enough to get them into the portfolio and into a frame. Oh. <laughs> We're the only ones allowed to touch them this much. <laughs> yep. Yeah. I have touched it all over. <laughs> With all the parts. <laughs> I, I don't have coronavirus, so. <laughs> that I'm aware, yes. You got the Rona. No, I mean, this is another part of painting. It's the you know the the physical aspect of it is you have to. Well, I mean, it's 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 my artwork, so I'm, you know, touching it until it's finished, and once it's finished, I don't touch it because I don't want to. But any any like touching or anything that happens to the art while I'm working on it becomes part of the art. Yeah. But once it's finished, I avoid touching it, and then I become quite precious about it as well. Um, I'm going to be very curious to see how uh, what you think of the the glossy posters, Addy, because this is this is night and day. It's challenging. Yeah. You know. It's challenging. Yeah. I think told them about it actually, you know. Um, I think you was it you who who suggested maybe sending it down a bit. Yeah, I had said you could take some sand, sandpaper to it, but I I haven't done it. I think Alan Williams did it because I was talking to his wife because she was asking for suggestions, um, and I think he did it. And I think it actually worked. My only worry would be that if the the, the if this stuff starts peeling the um mm. the the gloss 
I guess it depends on how well it's adhered to the to the surface below it. Um, but I think he did it and didn't have too much problems with it. Someone is asking if someone created comics based on rock icons, who would you like to illustrate? Um, they did that actually. There was a Kiss. Um, um, Kiss had their own comics, but there was there was. There was comics in the late '80s called rock, what they called rock comics or something like that, and um, they were, uh, yeah, they were they were comics based on bands, uh, and some of them were autobiographical, not autobiographical but biographical. Um, some of them were just, uh, you know, like like fantasy stories about the band. Um, they're not even. I mean, they're still doing it. They did one about Tool, uh, oh, like wow. two years ago or a year ago or something. Um, no, no, not official. No, I don't was, think any of them ever were. It was all science fiction as well. How weird. Um, there already was kind of a really cool... I always considered The Wall... Uh, Pink Floyd's The Wall to almost kind of be very comic booky in um in its in its presentation and telling a story um that you know that's not about the band necessarily but about the about a, a story that the music is about. I thought it was really cool. I know it's kind of trite now, but at the time it was it was really amazing. Scott Clowder is asking if either of you have ever had like a an art like a table disaster at a convention, like while you were working. No. Hi, Scott. First off, I'm glad Scott's joining us. Scott's our buddy. Um, I, I've never had, well, I, I did have that pen explode on that Leia commission. And it was on her cheek. Yep. Oh, that was awful. <laughs> yeah. Um, no, I was, I was doing a, um, a Leia commission, Princess Leia, and I had just refilled a marker and I didn't, like an idiot, didn't test the marker out before I went to her face with it. And yeah. it just bled all over her face. And it was like a, it was like a, a, a C6. Yeah, it was, was a dark one. Um, and basically just ruined it. And then one time, one time uh, you were doing a really detailed piece and some idiot who was sitting on the same table as you was telling a story in back of the table. And, and knock my table. And that idiot was me. No, no. Oh, no. <laughs> I was like, I don't remember that. <laughs> I was gonna say no, not at all. <laughs> so what about your vape pen exploding? Oh no, that happened twice in New York. In the I same know. crowd, it was New York Comic. Remember my my oh. vape pen kept dropping and 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 exploding. Not exploding, exploding, guys. I mean, the, the, the glass thing at the top that holds the, the vape juice shattered. And it happened to me twice. And I'd had to leave the con and go walk um, a mile and a half to a shop to get a new one. And then I'd come back, and then the motherfucker exploded again. You were in a really good mood. Yeah, oh, I was thrilled. <laughs> the, the worst uh, disaster story I ever heard was... Um, you know, in San Diego Comic Con and the Artist Alley, they're packed in so tightly there. Um, and when people have to get up, when the artists behind the table have to get up, um, there was an incident where somebody got up and was trying to squeeze behind people. And I think it was Dawn McTeague maybe, but they spilled, it. She, she had some water or something on her table uh, or maybe it was a soda, I don't know, but it got spilled. So it ran all over her artwork, her commissions. It ran through her prints. Oh, like it was, God. Yeah, I, I, she she packed up and left. I mean, she was just, I, I didn't blame her for that. Oh, your day's over at that point. Yeah, yeah that sucks. That That's the downside to having a thing of water at your table. You, that's it's, it's, it's almost kind of an accident waiting to happen if you're just not extremely careful. You know what the worst is, though? It's those open uh, plus cups of beer. And then people come oh, to yeah. the table and like, stand over the arc and start looking through the portfolio. And they're yeah. 
and there's beer, and you're just like, this is going to end so badly. Yeah. I think people, I'm really sorry, but you can't stand like here while you have an open like, drink container. No, no. What about when when parents walk up with their kids, with their kids with their chocolate covered fingers, oh, and, they start flipping and they start portfolio. flipping through the portfolio, and 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 you're just like. I mean, I love kids. I love when kids come by. I'm always really nice to them because I, I, you know, I really like kids. But yeah. I'm like, parents, come on, man. Yeah. Watch your kids. Because <clears throat> the last thing I want to do is I, I do not want to discipline someone else's kid. That that's that's a that's a big no no to me. So I feel really terrible if I have to be like, hey, hey buddy, 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 don't touch that. Mark, you know. <laughs> If they're not doing their job, I will have to do it for them. Right. Yeah. I mean, I get it. I've got the touchy kid, you know, <laughs> <laughs> touches everything. But, you know, that's for that reason. I have always got my eye on him, you know, when we're around stuff like that. Except for once we did take him when he was like three, we went to Dragon Con. Um, uh, or, or we, Jack and I went to Dragon Con to see Mark, and he, you know, he was three, and he still loved cars. So we always had a toy car with him, and he looked at that whole row of tables and was like, "Oh, it's just it's a, a racetrack." <laughs> no, and he put his car down and started going, and I had to grab him. I was like, "Oh my gosh." <laughs> <laughs> How we doing? Good. We probably should wrap it up soon. Though. Yeah, people are gonna get bored here if they're not already. Oh, they they can go. <laughs> Feel free to fuck off anytime you like. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah. we, we love you guys here. We pretty appreciate you guys hanging if, out with us. If, if you have something better to do, good for you. <laughs> <laughs> so many appointments, right? <laughs> no. Places to be, people to see. Oh, this is a big one. Sorry guys, I know the, be the beginning part of these sketches is not always of mine or not always the most entertaining thing to watch because it's just me doing a lot of flats. Oh, is also asking, um, have you had any like horror stories at home with art? on the drawing table, like spilling something. Oh God, yeah. Now those I have had. Uh, do you remember Thanos? I do remember. Andy. When a whole bottle of uh, acrylic ink spilled wow. on the table. No, it wasn't black, it was blue. It was blue. And it's, it's dark. it was dark blue, yeah, yeah. It's it, it knocked over and just ran down this half finished piece all the way down oh the no whole piece. Um, and actually it made the piece better because yeah. in the end but I was not happy oh man um, but actually probably the worst one was when I was working in Sova and I used the uh, oh I know this one <laughs> I know this story and it was a finished painting and, and I used just masking fluid on her skin to protect it while I was doing something around it. And I went to peel off the masking fluid and it just took off, not just the paint, but the paper under it. Oh with my it. God. Uh, and it, it was her face, right? It was her face, her arm. Um, all her skin, basically. All her skin, yeah. <laughs> oh my so God. I know. <laughs> it was very stressful. Um, but um, again, in the end, I. I used gesso to gesso the like damaged area and then repainted all of the damaged areas and it actually again ended up better than it would have been. 
Uh, now the gesso, to, ex to explain what that is, gesso is kind of a toothy kind of paint that you can actually recreate the surface of the paper, right? Yeah, it's, it's used as, as, as a, 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 like for painting as a, a surface. So, um, I mean, these days I, I, I would have done it completely differently, but back then I was really freaking out and I had to kind of think really quickly. Um, but I have also ruined pieces that I then just restarted entirely um, because uh, it just didn't feel like I could have saved them. Well, that, that, that just recently happened to me. I was working on a um, cover for my Art of Marvel book that Marvel's cut coming out this summer. And um, it's a, it was a painting of Psylocke that uh, I, I, I had something in mind what I wanted to do. Uh, lighting wise on it and it was something I never tried before but you know I'd done plenty of things I never tried before and been very successful at trying them and it, it just seemed it was one of those cases that because a lot of times if you're working on something that's not coming out the way you expected it you can keep noodling it and figuring it out or sometimes just make a happy mistake meaning that you didn't intend for it to do this but it, it still ended up looking really cool and this was a case where the more I noodled on it the more I painted on it just nothing was working and, and it was just progressively getting worse and worse and worse. And I was easily what two or three days into this thing. Oh yeah. And this looked very uh, far along. No, it was, it was very far. Um, it was all that was left to do was the background technically, but I was, you know, it was the cover of my art of book. I wanted it to, to look a certain way and it just wasn't anything close to like representing me. I didn't feel like. And so I, I, I did something I rarely ever done. And that was to literally scrap it and start over fresh. And I'm really glad I did because the, 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 the one that, you know, that in, we were using is, is much better. Well, that's, um, I generally don't scrap something unless the underlying drawing isn't good enough. Because now, you know, with, with painting with acrylic paint, I can usually fix anything. Uh, but if the drawing, if I realize kind of like halfway through that I made a, some kind of a misjudgment or error or whatever, uh, then there's nothing I can do to fix it. I have to restart. And that, that, that's kind of where I was because not only did I change around the lighting situation, ever, I, I really... You know, because I mean, I think you could agree with this, Addy. The face is everything. So, even if I could have saved the rest of the rest of the piece, the face just it wasn't there, and I was just getting more and more uh, you know dissatisfied with it. So, part of me scrapping it wasn't just to redraw it; it was it, or to repaint it with a different lighting scheme. It was I actually redrew her entire head um, to get a better result. By the way. Uh Jonathan, who has been asking some very good questions throughout this uh, live stream, wants to know if noodling is an industry term. <laughs> noodling? Yes. Um, actually, it's a it's a, it's a creative term uh, because, like, I don't know if any of you guys ever listened to Fish, the the band Fish. That's a uh, that's noodling. That that's a you know. So it can be applied to music. It can be applied to art. Um, I think it really could be applied to anything. Well, you know, just to go back to ruining pieces, uh, when I was working on the Spider-Man game, when I was doing those downloadable content, the second one, the one with Hammerhead, mm -hmm. I, I um, uh, redid. I got it to a grayscale stage, so it was fully drawn, fully shaded, and... I just wasn't liking how it was turning out. So that's the that's probably the last piece I but that wasn't really a disaster. It was just I, I kind of like looked at it at one point and I was like, ah, it's not doing what I wanted to do. So I restarted it. Um if you would like, I can go get the original right now. You still have it? <laughs> yeah. Our friend David bought those paintings from Addy and then proceeded to give them to me and said, can you hold on to these for me? <laughs> so I have that one and the uh, black cat, I believe, downstairs. You should have all three, I think. Did David buy all three? I thought so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, 
Yeah, I might. I have to check. I thought I only had two, but if I'm supposed to have three and I only have two, I might be in trouble. No, I think I think he got all three. I think unless he picked them up separately, he might have. Because I I don't think I have the black cat. I, I you know what? I don't. I have silver sable and the um, and hammerhead. So and you did the black cat first. Yep, I believe. So he must have got that one for you after you finished it, and then the other ones later. A music idol that either of you would like to meet. Music idol, Adam. I already met him. Oh. <laughs> I had my chance to meet Les Claypool sitting next to me, <laughs> and couldn't, couldn't, couldn't get my balls up to go and to say hello. No, Adam. Adam was my number one, and uh, yeah. I mean, all of the guys from Tool, but uh, Adam was always because of all the videos and. Um, uh, I, I always wanted to meet um, Neil Peart, um, but that obviously is not going to happen. Um, he was. Yeah, a, I, don't, I, don't, I don't ever like. Um, I think the last person that I was really awestruck to meet was Mobius. Um, um, yeah, and, and Adam. But I don't really like. There are no like celebrities or musicians or. Uh, they like to meet them if they're nice. Oh no, I mean, I'm happy to meet them, but I'm not like you know. Do you know what I mean? I'm not like dying to meet. Yeah. Right, not like awestruck. I mean, I already know myself, so. Oh. And you already know me. I mean, you don't get much better than me. There you go. Yeah. It's my birthday, Addy. Agree with me. <laughs> if you have nothing nice to say, say nothing at all. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be back to the original lesson of the day. Yep. Um, Scott is asking some good questions. He says he's heard of stories of painters barely making deadlines by shipping the painting while the paint is still wet, etc. Have either of you ever barely come in under the wire on a heat? Oh, uh, plenty of times, but... <laughs> I'm going to say... But you don't ship them the originals. Yeah, we don't ship originals, though. We, 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 have, we just have to... I scan it, Addy takes photos of his stuff. Um, but yeah, I, I've been racing on a, on a Monday or on a Friday... Um, racing, knowing that they're leaving the office at six o'clock to get stuff done, definitely happens. Very blue. I mean, Iron Man Extremis was meant to take six months. It took a year and a half. <laughs> <laughs> but it kicked. Everything. So, in yeah, the end, true. And the time that I took was worth it. Yeah. Looking good, man. Thanks. Mark, how is excited to see which other colors you're going to add? Uh, I'm going to do blue light coming this way and red light coming this way. Do a little blue and red. Complementary colors. Ended up drawing this a little bit larger than I I had anticipated, so it's a it's a big piece. I think this is going to be a very special post. I'm going to paint over all of the signatures. <gasps> <laughs> They'll just have to know that they're there. 
it's gonna be you know like in a couple of hundred years time they're gonna do some kind of like uh, uh, um, x-ray on him and realize that there are uh, signatures under there <laughs> it'll be on a very special episode of future antique World show The hell did I do with the? Oh, so much red. Oh, there you are. Uh, just the markers. Uh, Scott is asking if Lisa or I have ever had a hard time explaining what your significant other does for a living. <laughs> laughter is frequently, especially. Yeah. Especially when comics, before like the movies and everything, before comics were well known, um, people used to think when I said, oh, he's a comic artist, they used to think that they meant, we meant that he was a stand up comic. So. <laughs> <laughs> I would pay good money to see Addie on stage. <laughs> it would all be dad jokes. <laughs> yeah. No, we, we did have one lady at a dinner party who came up and was talking to Ivy, and after she left, we realized that that's what she had. Oh my God. She probably thought, this guy is not very funny for a community. <laughs> one of my favorites was I was at a, a, at a, um, a holiday party with Lisa, and because um, Lisa used to work in the corporate world in insurance, of all things. So you can imagine the kind of people that came to an insurance company's Christmas party. Um, and uh, someone asked me what I did, and I said that I draw comics. And she said, um, oh, like Garfield? <laughs> oh, yeah. And, um, and uh, I was like, no, not like Garfield. I, I, I find that this is how the conversation goes. So what do you do? I draw comic books. Oh, really? Like what? I draw, you know, things like Spider-Man, X-Men. Wow, that's really cool. Yep, it's fun. And that's, that's where I leave it. Because anything beyond that to a layman they don't understand. Like, I, I might as well just start speaking Swahili at that point. Or say you're like a, a nuclear physicist. It's right. Like, it's like, it just doesn't compute, you know, in their brains. I mean, I've told people, um, and this we get this occasionally, where they literally just, they don't even know what to say. Like, their brain can't comprehend yeah. that he, he's not an accountant. Like, it doesn't make sense. Yeah. So they just go, oh, and then there's just like silence. They're like, that's really cool. <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, I one time also had a guy, he was a friend of like someone's, I don't know who he was, but um, he asked like what what it was like Abby did, and I explained, and he was like, oh, does he do like that, like drawing on the computer? And I was like, oh, sometimes. And he was like, oh, yeah, I've heard that's really easy. And I was like, <laughs> 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 oh my god. <laughs> oh, no. oh, yeah, yeah. It has made it much easier since the movie. Uh, yeah. 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 It's, you know, it, it's so much more in the. Um, public eye. Yeah, in the public yeah. kind of. Public perception. And I always, I always have a, a same uh, kind of method. Because people are like, oh, what do you do? I'm like, oh, I'm, a, I'm an artist. And he's like, oh, what kind of artist? Oh, I'm a. You know, I work on comics, and then they're like, oh, oh, okay, is there anything that, like, I would know? And then I'm like, well, have you seen Iron Man? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, of course, I've seen Iron Man. I'm like, okay, I designed Iron Man. And then the look on their face, it's like exactly what you, Lisa, said. They can't process it. Right. What do you mean? Like, what? what? I'm like, well, you know, somebody has to design the, the look of the character. So that's what I did. <laughs> you were in the suit? No, they, they, just, they just can't comprehend what that, yeah. you know, involves. Yeah. No, that's that's exactly what it is. Like, like, like it was all just created in a computer by just hitting a few keys or yeah. something, you know. How do you do that? Well, do you have the Spider-Man key on your keyboard? <laughs> you know, it's got oh, this little, little drawing of his face. I press that and he appears. I have, I have Iron Man. That's how I do all of the Iron Man. <laughs> When I'm asked to do Iron Man, I'm like, oh, thank God, this is going to take like two minutes. <laughs> <laughs> my favorite thing was, um, this is not my story, this is Adam Hughes' story, but um, 
you know, Adam was one of the guys that kind of helped revolutionize the way comics are colored uh, just by his coloring method. But Adam still colors with a mouse. And, um, but uh, someone walked up to him and he gets this question a lot. So uh, I, I love this answer. Someone walked up and said, how do you color? Um, and Adam <laughs> goes, they basically go, how do you color like you? And Adam says, um, well, um, first off, did, you, you, um, does your uh, keyboard have an F13 key? And of course the guy's like, no. And he goes, well, you gotta get an F13 <laughs> keyboard. <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know, uh, the, it only goes up to F12 on the <laughs> keyboard. Except for the coloring. Except for the coloring keyboard, yeah. <laughs> so you press, get, get an F13 keyboard, press F13, and done. Voila. Your dad's Oh, awesome. Hello. Hello. My papa. 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 Papa, can you hear me? If you're 57, your dad must be like 103. <laughs> no, he, he had Mark when he was four. Four. Oh, okay. We are in the South. <laughs> my mother's cousin's aunt's sister is also my mother. Oh, stop it. <laughs> I've never heard it. Well, we are wizards. No, I, I haven't. No. <laughs> Your dad says his mother and I are cousins. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm so pretty. I haven't really done that in a long time. Yeah, me either. Uh, but when I was younger, I think the longest when I, was, when I did those 11 pages in seven days, uh, my first interior work for Marvel, it would have been like 2003 um, or maybe 2004. And uh, it was a short story. District X. District X, yeah. Time. Yep, yep, the David Hine, yep. Uh, and I had to do 11 pages in seven days, fully painted. Oh, Jesus. I, I don't remember much at all during those seven days. You were, yeah, yeah, you were in Chicago. Yeah, yeah. yeah it was madness. Um, yeah, I, I, I pulled, um, I did 72 hours straight because uh, I was above and up against a deadline. And um, I had to end up doing. Um, I had to do six or seven pages in, in, in three days and uh, it just about killed me. No, it's the worst. I mean, at, at this point now, at my age, the, the, my young age of 57, apparently, according to Addie, um, if I don't think I'm going to meet a deadline, I'm just really honest with my editor. And I'm like, it's not going to happen. <laughs> I, I, I'm too old to kill myself anymore. Oh, no. Honestly, life's too short to... Yeah. Uh, yeah. like do all nighters. I, I could do them when I was in my twenties. Uh, I I just now in my forties. A I can do it. My mind just goes. Yeah. Like, I, I just can't keep the, like concentration. And B I end up doing subpar work, and that's to me worse than anything. Yeah. So. Scopus. People are really um, amazed by the fact that you can work and uh, be drawing and talking at the same time. <laughs> we we do that a lot at conventions. It's kind of all we do is is draw and talk. Who says I'm talking and drawing? <laughs> That's not actually Addy drawing. You're, you're <laughs> on my head. Oh. He he hired somebody to come in. He's just uh, standing over him. It's actually Tamsin and I are drawing, and Mark and Addie are just talking off the side. How funny would that be if that was actually <laughs> happening? <laughs> Umberto Ramos says, 
Um, who are the coolest couples you know in comics, and why are they Fernanda and Humberto? <laughs> <laughs> We love Fernando Humberto. They are the coolest people in comics. I like Fur because I can say the most inappropriate jokes ever, and she laughs at every one of them. <laughs> I actually talked about my Cirque du Soleil act where, because, okay, so here's a secret about me. I, when I take a piss, I can piss for about eight minutes straight. It's awful. It's, it, I have the world's <laughs> biggest bladder. And... I was sitting at dinner and we're all eating and Fur's next to me and I'm talking about, about how my Cirque du Soleil act is going to be he's coming on stage with a bucket and peeing for eight minutes straight <laughs> and she was falling over. What a, what a skill. It is. It's an incredible skill. Asking how you two feel about seeing your work in movies, video games, or even memes. I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Ew, quit it. <laughs> uh, it's really cool. Yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, the thing about working in video games or movies or, or cartoons or anything, TV, is um, there's no real recognition factor there. Um, not as much as you get when you're in comics. I mean, if you think about the video games you love, you know, can you really name one single artist that actually worked on that video game? You know, a lot of cases they're, um, they're, they're, uh, um, anonymous, anonymous, anonymous. Um, but getting to do it is, is really cool. It's, it's a lot of fun. Um, Addie's done more of it than I have, I and mean, I've done my fair share, but Addie's made a career out of it. Um, and gotten a lot of recognition for it. I've been really l lucky that uh, the movie work I've done, I got quite a lot of recognition for. Um, I don't know. I, I, I think because when I, when I create work for a specific thing, it doesn't really like, you know, if I do something for a comic or if I do something for a movie or a video game, uh, I ex because I that's what I did it for, I, I, I think I expect, like to see it, so it doesn't really, like, I don't really have an emotional response to it, but the weirdest thing is seeing my work in, like, a completely unexpected environment. Uh, I mean, like that T-shirt on Tiger King, you know. Yeah. To see something, you know, or, uh, you know, in New York, and there's just a random guy walking by with my art on. On, on his t-shirt or you know when when a, a kind of a, a, a large chain suddenly starts printing shirts with my art on it oh, like yeah like what Brian Mark did mm -hmm. or those yeah, but... uh, grocery bags where, where were they from were they from Publix, Publix? Publix. Those, those were Publix yeah. bags yeah that kind of stuff like catches me off guard a lot more than yeah. you know something that I've actually done the work specifically for. Because um, no, for me, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, I think often, you know, people who even like, you know, wear those shirts and uh, they have no idea who created them. So, you know, they could end up talking, I could end up talking to someone wearing a shirt with my art on it and they, you know, would have no idea that, right. you know, it's my art. Yeah, see, that, that, that seems to happen to me far more um, with my Deadpool artwork, um, where I'll, I'll be, you know, someplace like a Hot Topic or something like that, and they'll have a T-shirt or a poster, and I realize that it's, it's my Deadpool on the poster. Because, um, you know, Deadpool has become the Mickey Mouse of Marvel Comics. I mean, he's, he's everywhere. I mean, the number of people that... Because I, I redesigned the Deadpool logo when I did Cable Deadpool, and that seems to be the go-to logo that they use now on hats and T-shirts and everything. Every time I see it, I'm like, hey, I designed that. But, you know, you never want to say anything to the people actually wearing it because nine times out of ten, they don't actually read Deadpool. And even if they did, they really could give a shit. <laughs> but it's, it's neat for us. By the way, I just wanted to say that the Stuart Angle joint that uh, like If anybody is looking for a place to get really great artbooks, you should go to Stuart Angle's. Hell yeah. yeah. That's where I get most of mine from. Hi, Stuart. They have a really amazing selection. Um, 
They can also get me, uh, Addy and our my sketchbook from him. Yeah. Oh, I'm done. Marcus? I'm working in paint markers. It's different for me. <laughs> this one turned out good. Came out great, man. And the horns too. Sexy horns. All right. Well, um, we probably can wrap it up. And, I mean, uh, I have to, to sit and chat. I, I can, I can ask stupid questions. Go ahead, ask stupid questions. What's your favorite color? Purple. Hey, Mark, how has the show been for you? <laughs> Addy, tell me a time you were really embarrassed. Right now. <laughs> We're talking to you. <laughs> uh, I'll be back. Oh, he's leaving us. Oh. Any, uh, got? any other questions? Thanks for staying with us, guys. Yeah. We're aware yeah. it's going Yeah, I don't think we plan to talk this long. Here's what's funny. Uh, little, the ABCs of Addie and I. Addie and I will sit on Skype we'll call each other on Skype and we'll sit here and work together like this, basically what we're doing right now. Um, and we'll do this. I, there's been times where we've gone eight hours where we'll just sit here and just draw and talk. And sometimes we'll even not talk. We'll sit there. We'll sit here in silence until someone, you know, goes, Oh, by the way, did you see this thing or whatever? And it's just, it's nice to have somebody you can, you know, talk to since our, our lives are normally so solitary. It really does. Time does go by very fast whenever we uh, we do that. Oh, yeah. We think. We think. It's good. So this is always the most time consuming part is laying down the the flats before we start doing the detail work. Oh, I've really trashed your paper here. I hope you don't mind. No, it's fine. I can't believe Jack has not been running in here. Normally when I'm when I'm broadcasting, Jack wants to make an appearance. Yeah. You have Loki for your last instead. That's true. Some good questions on this. No. <laughs> um, Don is asking, um, do you coat the paper first to get the Molotov markers to stick? No, I don't. It just naturally sticks by itself. Oh, and this is really glossy paper. Um, but it, uh, the mall crawls go on it pretty, pretty easily. It's just the initial sketch. That's a pain in the ass. So either of you have That's the question for Kat. Yeah. My friendship with Addie. <laughs> what was the question? Yeah. Do we have any guilty pleasures? Oh. <laughs> probably musicals, probably. Uh, that's true. I, I, I. I, I am a big fan of uh, Broadway musicals. Um, only and, and Lady Gaga. <laughs> I do like Lady Gaga. Lady Gaga is pretty awesome. 
Do I have guilty pleasure funds? Uh, probably. I'm trying to think what they might do. I'm eating crepes right now, but they're not. I don't feel guilty about it. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. It's not that fun. I don't, I don't know. Usually, if I enjoy something, I don't really feel guilty about it. Um, I really like the musical stylings of Meatloaf. Ugh. Lisa Me hates them. I really like, like the music. Yeah. Meatloaf especially, is awesome. Especially Back Out of Hell, too. Yeah. That's what we grew up on. So, I should like it because I really do love that kind of. You like you rock, know, rock, rock opera, rock opera type stuff, but I, I don't know why. It just he's just his stuff has just never appealed to me. But oh, I do like rom coms. That's, oh, you that's do. That's, that's right. right. Yeah. yeah. I feel guilty. Well, I feel I feel bad because I hate them. So Abby never gets <laughs> when I'm around because I'm offended by them. <laughs> Offended. <laughs> well, it's all right. Could be worse. Oh, since I'm finished with this, I can show you that something. Let me see what I can show you. <laughs> uh oh. Uh, <laughs> this is the part of the broadcast where Addy whips out his penis. No. <laughs> um, it is after the work. It'll be your company. Yeah, that's still. Nobody's, <laughs> nobody's signed up for that. Buddy. No, probably not. Maybe people have some idea why they want me to come. Oh, I thought you were going to like some art or something. No, nobody wants to do that. Oh, okay. I have my collection of two um, backstage passes. Oh, yeah. Right. I'll do a, a little show and tell. I'm going to say mine are stuck on my, uh, stuck on my portfolio. No, I, uh, these are the actual language stuff. Yeah, no, I, I had the stickers, so I, I, I stuck them on my portfolio. The, the, the Epstein didn't kill himself one, and then the... Oh, uh, yeah. The Handmaid's Tale. Handmaid's Tale, that's what it was, yeah. Actually, yeah. I'll put this poster away so I don't get my hands more on it. So Thompson and I went to the opening of the Iron of the Iron Man uh, um, experience in Hong Kong. Mm -hmm. It was actually the day before my birthday in Hong Kong, so it was really cool because we got to be VIPs. Uh, oh, Hole H, and oh, Shanghai Comic Con. Batch or lanyard. That's cool. Oh, this is a tool management um, crew pass. Uh, I can't remember. 2017 or 18. But it's a approved refugee passport. <laughs> This is the last last one from this 2020 tour. Um, oh, this is this one is a good one. It's the United Airlines customer service. <laughs> <laughs> Fly the friendly sky, and it's and it's guys in, in balaclava. <laughs> uh, I love their sense of humor with this stuff. I want to say it's Maynard who made these. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, this this one's my favorite, and it's with Jussie Smoleski. Was uh, 
Smollett. Yeah, Dusty Smollett. <laughs> when he was uh, fake beat up by the Nigerian brothers. <laughs> Let's make Justy great again. <laughs> <laughs> and I like it sponsored by Ace Hardware and Bleach. <laughs> uh, Uh, any reservations about having a remarked poster done by Adam? Uh, to a poster done by Adam? Yeah. No. He no. draws over my art all the time. <laughs> he detected my art all the face is. <laughs> so fuck him. <laughs> I'll, I'll show you my cool thing from the Atlanta show. So, um, well, first off, we got to meet Justin because my, my son plays bass, and so he got to meet Justin. So Justin gave... Gave Jack one of his uh, picks, which is really cool. Um, they're kind of like souvenir picks, so I thought this was really cool. But this is my this is the coolest thing I've got that night. This is the actual pick, or one of the actual picks that Adam used on stage in Atlanta, and you can see how worn out the edge of it is where he played. So I mean, it's not signed or anything, and it's just a regular old Jim oh, Dunlop. Yeah. He uses those envelope ones, yeah. Yeah. And uh, he so. Gave it to you, right? No, no, he gave it to me. <laughs> well, I found it on the floor and I, I said, I, I said, is this yours? He went, yeah, you can have it. I went, okay. Because <laughs> it fell out of his pocket. Um, anyway, I thought that was really cool. This is. Mark, did I ever show you this? What? This? No. So. What is that? It's probably the. It's the only actual movie prop that I have and it was from Iron Man 2 and it was uh, that Stark Expo yeah the one that in the beginning of the movie yeah and they all are wearing uh, uh, lanyards with like their names on it and they just gave the names on the lan lanyards were like people who worked in the movie oh that's and awesome in the movie yeah somebody actually wore like an extra wore the one that says my name on it. That is awesome. Uh, and it says, yeah, yeah I'm in the area of Stark Industries. How'd you get it? Um, it was sent to me by a, 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 a fan who's a, a Brian? Brian, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, who's a, like a movie art and, and prop collector. Yeah. Yeah, Brian's really nice. Yeah, he bought uh, a couple of like the movie related pieces I did and I uh, sent you this. That's amazing. Yeah, it's the only actual like screen used prop I have. Yeah. We have a screen used prop right here behind me. Um, do you guys ever see Team America World Police? Oh yeah. Um, this is let's see if you can see this. Can you guys see this? I'm not. Yeah. This is Kim Jong il's chair. From two American <laughs> World Police. That's there were actually awesome. two of these in the movie, and um, he actually, when he starts singing um, "I'm So Ronery," in the first few bars of it, he walks by this chair. There's two of them in the scene, but it's really well made, and actually quite large, larger than you would think it would be. Um, but yeah, that's one of our one of our props. Oh, I have another really cool, cool, cool related thing, and this was. A drawing by Adam. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I have two of them, the other ones in my wallet downstairs. But uh, uh, he did three of them and he gave me two. That's awesome. And, uh, I really need to frame it actually because uh, I just have it kind of sitting around here. <laughs> Oh, that was my show and tell. <laughs> yeah, it's good times. <laughs> good times. It's, con it's, it's content. <laughs> I mean, now it's turned it into really like. <laughs> Don't blame us, blame the quarantines. <laughs> Uh. 
Oh, all right. Why don't we go ahead and cut it off? I think we're good. And I'm going to finish this and I will post this when I finish it. Um, I took probably another hour or so on it to go um, really kick those highlights up and stuff like that. Um, are you guys good, Addy? Uh, I'm good. I'm fine. We, I, I can, I can <laughs> stay here if you want for the next hour. I don't care. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Eddie, all I see is what I'm assuming is your elbow. <laughs> yeah, I think that's all we can see. No, oh, that's right. That's I'm not right. A... <laughs> I hope it's your elbow. <laughs> I wish I knew how to make what are they called? Shadow puppets. Yeah. But I, don't. <laughs> I can do a Doberman. That's the only thing I can do. I taught you that one, didn't I? Oh. All right, so we'll um we'll go ahead and end it now. Um, we've been going a couple hours now, I think. <laughs> Interpreter dance with your hands. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, thank you guys for coming by. Nice. Um, <laughs> and uh, thank you for sticking with us. <laughs> and uh, yeah, um, any fi any final words, Addy? Addy's losing his mind. <laughs> Final words? Final words. A final thought, like Jerry Springer. Uh, <laughs> wow, Jameson. <laughs> Wait, Addie's got a puppet. Hold on. Uh-oh. Until next time, be good to yourselves and each other. Addie, take the elevator down. Thank you for watching. <laughs> Thank you for watching, yes. Oh, boy. <laughs> Addie's losing That's his mind. <laughs> I Thanks, hope the 58th year is as, as, uh, better than, than this one has been so far. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, man. All right, guys. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Um, I'm sure we will be back at, at some point um, uh, when we figure out something else we think could be equally as entertaining as this. Um, it may just end up being the uh, Eddie Grenell puppet show where I'm just going to talk to a blue puppet for an hour. Um, yeah. That could happen. We'll uh, we'll see how it goes. Hey, Mark. Yeah. <laughs> I see you. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate that, man. All right. As always, uh, we're going to end it, and now we're going to watch Addy fumble with his controller trying to figure out how to end this video. I'm never going to end it. I'm just going to leave it forever. <laughs> He's still going. <laughs> All right, well, I have to go make a steak. <laughs> Are you making out with it now? <laughs> he is. He's making out with it. <laughs> oh. How much caffeine have you had? I haven't had any. Ginger <laughs> beer. This is all me. Oh, oh gosh. God. <laughs> Lisa's just now seeing you tongue the puppet. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh my god. All right, bye guys. Good to see you. You too, man. We'll talk tomorrow, okay? Bye guys. Love you. Love you guys. Bye, Lisa. Lots of love.